Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Tom and this is Tom's Toys 95 and this is my 700 subscriber special. Whoop, whoop. So thank you to everyone so far that has been watching the channel and has subscribed. A uh, quick introduction before I pass you over. This is Wesley, my best mate and my boss. We've been oh, friends oh. for how long now? Too long. Nah, Too long. Probably about, what, over 20 years? Well, coming up to 20 years? Yeah, about 20 years. Almost, yeah. Also, yeah. It's like year five, pretty much, isn't it? Yeah, since the age of 10, yeah. So we're what, long, 29 long now? 29, 13, three months. No, I'm not 30 till next year, yeah. so you're getting older before me. I know, <laughs> I know. I know, yeah, but we've met in middle school. Um, used to be a little terror in year five and six and eventually calmed down and we bonded over Nintendo magazines and video games. Oh, those Nintendo magazines are great, weren't yeah. they? Start Just, of, start of the obsession, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so for context, I think I can't remember who had the magazine first. It might have been you. Maybe. But I think uh, I think we sat next to each other, didn't we, uh, in year seven or eight? Yeah. And we'd yeah. known each other for year five and six, but that was probably the time where we actually like became friends. Yeah. We sat next to each other, and one of us had those Nintendo magazines, and we used to sit and read it every every morning, didn't we? Yeah. And then I think uh, the other person went and bought a magazine the week yeah. after, and then we just started Tried to one up me each time. Started taking it in turns, <laughs> buying the magazines and collecting them, and yeah. then that's how we became friends. So yeah, so yeah, good times. So yeah, we've got a bit of a Q and A today. So some subscribers have left some comments for me, um, and then we've got a few from yourself and a few people that I know that have also commented on the video. Yeah. So let's get straight into so, it if you want. No pressure, Tom, no pressure. So to start with then, I'm gonna start with really, so people can get to know you, the man behind yeah, sure. Tom's Toys. So tell everyone your interests. What are you interested in? Other than the obvious on the channel, so eBay reselling and video games, I'm quite into Formula One and football, so I'm a big Man United fan. I've Ooh. mentioned it a few times, but yeah, I've been supporting Man United now since about five years old. I used to be obsessed with David Beckham when I was younger. I remember someone trying to uh, get me to support Chelsea, and it was Man United versus Chelsea in the final. Oh, and, they, and they said whoever wins will, will buy the kit. Yeah. And I think Chelsea won, but I was that adamant that I wanted to be a United fan that I sort of still asked for a United shirt. Oh. And then when Beckham left, I was heartbroken. Um, but then Rooney came in a few years later, and now, Rooney. And now I'm yeah. obsessed with Rooney. So Yeah, well, I think I remember when... We were probably about 12, I found an old birthday cake of Wayne Rooney's face underneath your bed. Oh. <laughs> Do you know, I, I, I don't think I've still thrown that away. So for context, oh. I, was, I still am. I'm obsessed with Rooney. I've mentioned it a couple of times on my channel, dropped a few hints, but uh, I am obsessed with Wayne Rooney. Yeah. I've met him a couple of times in the last couple of years, but it's taken like 16, 17 years to meet him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been obsessed with him since I was younger. And uh, one year... Awesome. Um, one year I got a birthday cake with Man United players on and it had Rooney on it and I was that into like collecting Rooney shirts and memorabilia mm -hmm. and tat and his books and hats and scarves that I uh, kept the piece of uh, birthday cake or the, the well just the icing yeah just and it, it, yeah. it lasted about I think the last time I saw it was about four or five years ago and it had gone completely like it hadn't even gone rotten but like it just completely just evaporated like yeah. the, the face was like unrecognizable uh, so yeah, I, I, I assume I threw, I, I assume I threw uh -huh. it in the bin, but I might, I might have just kept it for the banter. Like, yeah, my, my, very so new, yeah. It'd be in storage at my mum's house if it is, I'll have yeah. to fish it out. Oh yeah. no. You, come on, you've got more interest than yeah. just Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney, football, Formula One. Um, I feel like embarrassed saying I'm a Formula One fan because I only got into it about two and a half, three years there's ago. More, there's more embarrassing interest than the Formula um, One. Boy. No, no. But like, <laughs> I feel like every time I, t I say to someone, I like Formula One, and yeah. they say, I like Formula One too, they're usually hardcore Formula One fans. Okay, yeah. And I, I've only been interested in it since the, like, not because of the Netflix series, but since it sort of yeah. came out. Yeah. Um, and I'm quite generic, I, you know, I like Lewis Hamilton, uh, I saw that he got robbed against Max Verstappen a few years ago yeah. and I, I didn't, didn't understand the sport, I didn't understand why he got robbed, I watched the video, didn't quite understand it, so then I looked into the rules and once I kind of figured out why, yeah. I wanted to watch the next season and see his comeback and that kind of went down like a lead yeah. balloon, he, he lost every too, race there. Yeah, it looks too complicated for me, all those rules. Yeah, but but he one. finally got his first win the other week, which is good, so I was pleased with that. But no, uh, Formula One, uh, what else? I used to, I used to enjoy drawing, um, yeah. Yeah. and art. I haven't really done that for a while, yeah. but re reselling and collecting is the main one. Really, I spend my, so much time like, outside of my full time job is is pretty much reselling, yeah. making videos, buying stuff, selling stuff, listing it, testing it, posting it, packaging it. Yeah. I don't really have time to have any other interests other than eBay. That's kind of like my personality yeah. at this point. But you got to mention aliens. 
Oh yeah, the aliens from Toy Story, yeah. So <laughs> I've mentioned this on the channel a lot of times yeah. and I've got a huge collection of aliens. So I moved out of my mum's house in with my partner um, last September and before that we'd been renting for 18 months. So about two years ago we moved out of the house and I left all my aliens at my mum's house. But I think I got an alien toy one year from my nan uh, for Christmas and uh, me and my cousins loved the Toy Story films. So we all got like this, this uh, Toy Story like toy yeah. each. And I didn't realise I was getting one. They got a toy each. Uh, yeah. They got their favourite characters. And then I, I got given one. And I, at the time, I didn't really have a favourite character. But in my head, I was kind of like, I kind of hope it's the alien, you know. Yeah. So I opened it up and it was an alien. Uh, and I think my favourite colour was green at the time. So I yeah. think that's kind of why, because obviously the alien yeah. is green. Um, and then from there, I just kept seeing, like the movie was relevant. I was, I was like a yeah. teenager. So of course. every time I go to the shop, yeah. Aliens are everywhere, Toy Story is everywhere, so I just kept buying more alien stuff. And it kind of got to that point where people didn't know what to buy me for birthday and Christmas. So they're like, let's just buy him an alien thing. Uh, and then I just built up this massive collection. It got a bit out of hand, didn't it? Yeah, just a bit. Just so, a bit. yeah, unfortunately, they're all in boxes. I've got no room to display them. Yeah. Uh, whether I will ever display them, I don't know. Whether I'm going to sell them, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But can't, it's you definitely... can't do that. You we'll see. I'll, I'll definitely keep some of it, but I think it's yeah. with the whole reselling thing. I think one day I'm going to fish it all out. I'll do a video on it, show everyone how crazy the collection is, and then I'll probably part with some of it. You're in for a surprise. You're in for a surprise. Yeah. Did you see the um, the teaser or GM released the other day? The Toy what, Story. Sorry? Toy Story. Oh yeah, it's Toy Story yeah. Five. Yeah. I think that's actually a, from a selling point of view. I've actually kind of been patiently waiting. So. Toy Story 4 came out and it was that was the deciding point for me whether to carry on collecting the aliens or whether yeah. to start selling them. It's obviously the hype around the film. And I was really disappointed with Toy Story 4 because they yeah. the aliens were advertised on the poster and they didn't get taken on the RV for anyone that's seen the film. Yeah. And the aliens didn't actually like go on the RV, so they just had like a cameo appearance. So but then they brought out a load of like alien remix stuff. So anyone that has any interest in Disney stuff or Funko figures. They brought out a whole wave of aliens dressed as different Disney characters, and it kind of like sucked me back into collecting yeah. them. So I got all the pop vinyls. I vowed never to collect pop vinyls, but then I bought the whole wave of alien stuff. I got pin badges, the lot. Can't help yourself, can you? And then, <laughs> and then it got to that point, yeah, where the kind of to Toy Story Four kind of flopped a bit. The toys weren't great. Pe yeah. Collectors didn't like the toy line. Yeah, but um, back in like the nineties, they were huge. Weren't oh they? yeah, like, yeah. So the er the early Toy Story figures are, are really collectible. Yeah. Toy Story three figures are quite collectible as well. But the four figures that I think they were made quite cheaply, the fans wasn't really happy with the way the toys. Because let's be honest, like uh, now it's at Toy Story four. Yeah. Most of the fans, whilst you know it'd be adults that have introduced their kids to it. So, course, yeah. so the adults are actually collecting the toys almost as much as the kids are, yeah. and they were disappointed with like the build quality and everything. No, I get that. And as a result, it just uh, it kind of flopped. So uh, I think I got to that point where I was kind of like, well, I've bought out all this alien remix stuff. Yeah. So I've just bought it, and I'm going to collect it. So what's the point in selling it now? At the time, I had when I lived in my mum's house, I had quite a big bedroom, as you remember. Yeah. So I managed to like display all my alien stuff properly, and then when I moved out, it all got boxed up. As I said, Toy yeah. Story Four kind of flopped. So but the seatbelts didn't, did they? No, no, I've got, I've got alien seat belt covers in my car. I don't think it's ever made it in the video. It might have done, they might have slipped in somewhere. Slipped but yeah, in. I have a, my mum bought me some alien seat belt covers, so that's that's kind of fun. That's a talking point when someone gets in the car. Yeah. But yeah, so, so basically, Toy Story 4 flopped, and I didn't know um, what to do with the, with the alien stuff yeah. when I moved out. I thought there's no point selling it, because I probably at a low point, uh, people didn't really like the film, so yeah. I've kept hold of them. But now Toy Story 5's come out, hopefully, yeah. The aliens are actually in Toy Story 5 and yeah. it builds up a bit of hype again. And then not I might, to, I might not to talk to too much about Toy Story 5, but am I right in saying it versus electronics? Are they going up against like electronic toys in this one? I'm not sure. I, did, I, haven't actually, I saw a teaser, but I haven't really seen the Pretty whole sure that, that's the rumours. Yeah. We'll have to see. We'll have to yeah. see. Uh, that would make sense, but I don't know. Who knows what they've got Time's in store. Time's changing. Hopefully it's better than 4. And Shrek 5 as well. Oh, Shrek yeah. yeah. That, that's Can't forget Shrek. Nah. But um, were you ever into the Shrek films? Not really. I've watched them. I weren't really like a massive fan of them. I, I feel like Shrek 1 I've seen like 30 times and Shrek yeah. 2, 3, 4 I've probably seen once or twice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do. I, I like the original Shrek film. Yeah. haven't really watched the others all that much to say that I'm a hardcore Shrek fan, but I'm looking forward to 5. Yeah. So, but yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much all I'm interested in. So, before we get into the viewers' questions, I've got some of my own. Oh God, here we go. Do, do, do. So, Tom, what made you start YouTube? Good question, actually. Um, 
It was something I always wanted to do when I was younger. I used to watch YouTube a lot, so I used to play games. I don't really yeah. get time to play games anymore, but I uh, used to play games a lot. And while I was gaming, I was always watching YouTube. I uh, used to watch a lot of unboxing videos. Those are kind of like died out now, but at the time I was always watching unboxing videos and gaming videos and people collecting stuff. And I always thought that's something I wanted to do. But then I've, I've always just hated the sound of my own voice and I've yeah. hated myself on camera. And every time I've tried to like record a video, even jokingly or just like it's never going to go anywhere. But, yeah. you know, you practice a video and I look back and I'm like, absolutely not. That's not going on the Internet. I'm not having anyone I know watch that. Yeah. Um, until about last year, I kind of just thought, Do you know what? I'm 29 years old yeah. now, 28 when I made the channel. And I just thought life's too short. If you want to do something, do it. And exactly. part of my personal growth and personal journey is just, you know, trying to get more confident. Yeah. So I, I made a, I think I made a purchase on game and I think I bought like 90 PS4 and Xbox one games. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I made a, a big uh, purchase and it came through the post and I thought I would like to see someone go through these games. So surely someone would, would yeah. you know, would want to watch. Was it, was it a lucky like mystery box? Was it? Was kind of, it? yeah. It's just, I just made an order, but I filtered it from cheapest to highest. And I literally just bought like the 90 cheapest games because they're all going to be brand new and sealed. And it was kind of like an investment. Um, a lot of those games won't go up in value much, but um, some of them are really obscure games that, yeah. that didn't really do very well and they got put in the sale. And once they're sold out, they're sold out. And that's obviously when the prices go up. So it kind of, for me, I bought them with the intention to keep them sealed. Yeah. Um, and as a result, um, I've made a video on it. And, and yeah, that's kind of how nice. it started. Very nice. It'd be good to tell the viewers about your public speaking as well, like how this, how you've evolved from six yeah, months ago. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I did, I did mention it in my one of my last videos actually, but um, obviously, you know, uh, on the stats, I think it gets like twenty percent of viewers actually get to the end. So quite a yeah. lot of you probably won't even know. But um, I got put forward to do a public speaking event. So we go to a uh, what is it like a chamber of commerce type yeah, thing, net networking like, event. Networking event. Network event yeah. And um, we had the, I had the opportunity to have a mentor. So I yep. took the opportunity once a month, I have a meeting with him, we have a coffee, he's a nice bloke, he gives me business advice. And I told him one of my fears in terms of the workplace is, is public speaking. Yep. So he obviously went higher up and mentioned it and uh, they were like, oh, that's, that's grand, let's yep. do a public speaking event. So there's no way to get over your fear of public speaking than, than doing a public speech. So. <laughs> So yeah, I wasn't yeah. really happy with the decision, but they, they put me forward and I kind of couldn't really say no at that point. Yeah. So there's about 45 people in the room and the uh, the speech was, was on something that we, we could choose. So apparently the uh, life and times of Wayne Rooney was not allowed um, yeah. or, or was deemed not uh, interesting enough, <laughs> So which uh -huh. I disagree. But anyway, so I had to go with eBay reselling. So I did like a 10 step guide on how to sell on eBay. Uh, so I think I did all right. Um, yeah. I, I didn't stumble on anything. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So yeah. I was quite proud of myself once I'd done it. Yeah. Do you, th I, do you think YouTube helped you with that? Definitely. Yeah. I think the first video I made, I was quite nervous. Like if you watched the first video back, I thought I'm being held at gunpoint or yeah. something. But like, at least with that, it was a, just a test yeah. to see, am I going to get any ne negative comments? Are people going to like the video or not? And it got a few positive comments and I just thought, you know what, I'll make it. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, let's make a few more videos. Yeah. And then it kind of stemmed from there. So I think the videos have definitely helped the confidence. I've got used to the sound of my voice now on camera. Obviously, you have to edit it and you have to listen to some bits over and over again. So yeah. I've kind of just, I'm at peace with that now. That's you know, good. I wish I sounded a bit different, but it is what it is. Nah. Nah. Yeah. I remember giving you a little pep talk as well when you first, well, you first mentioned the idea about doing YouTube and how scared you was. Yeah. I said to you, no one cares. True. If you mess up, you mess up. It's, you only live once. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's got to the point now where I actually tell people oh i have a youtube channel yeah um which i never thought would get to that point because yeah. i always thought that i would keep it you know behind closed doors and yeah. hopefully random people discover it and not people that i know but it's got to the point now where i'm kind of like quite open with it and if people if it comes up in conversation i'll tell people i make videos and if they yeah. subscribe they subscribe you know and i kind of like i kind of got over that fear now that if they watch they watch yeah no that's nice that's nice so question two why tom's toys 95 why did you decide to use that name? Kind of going back to the alien question really was that uh, the aliens are my favorite character. Toy Story is one of my favorite films. And when I wrote out Tom's Toys 95, it kind of looked in my head. The first thing I saw was Toy Story, like it yeah. looks very similar. So I thought, why not incorporate the Tom's Toys into the Toy Story font? But also toys and Toy Story, they're very relevant. It's kind of like a, a good, I you know, I thought it was a good logo yeah, yeah. slash brand. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but when I say toys, it's it's not 
literally toys it's collectibles games figures obviously like toys are involved and i do buy and sell toys um but i'm not obsessed with like kids toys it's just a case of the umbrella of toys of course the figures and the games and that of course so i've been dying to ask you this question tom go on so was captain underpants the start of all this <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking about this, about what, what que- you did say you had a few questions. Yeah. And I knew you'd probably slip this one in. So, Captain Underpants, and how, how do we describe this story? Who's going to explain it? Uh, just two saddest kids in school. I'll let you right. explain it, man. I'll tell you what, okay. So, so in, in school, we have, obviously had the school library. Everyone had yeah. a library. We go in, we rent books and whatever. And they, they sometimes had some competitions and you could, you could win some books. So it was usually like a drawing competition or who can dress up the best and yeah. something like that. So uh, we used to like the Captain Underpants books along with the Nintendo magazines. We used to, we used to always rent the Captain Underpants books out. Yep. And um, there was a competition to who can design the best underpants. All it was was an A4 piece of paper with just the outline of a pair of pants. Good times. And it was, and it was who, who could design the best <laughs> one. So it was like his next pair of pants, weren't yeah. it? All the gadgets yeah. and gizmos. And you could decide the colour, the gizmos, the gadgets yep. on there. And uh, there were four winners and there were four years in the school. So it was pretty obvious that they were going to give one book to each year group. Yep. And we just so happened to be in the same year group. But we also, there's like, what, seven classes in that year group? And we yep. were in the same class and we sat next to each other. So the chances of both of us winning was like impossible. So. Yep. As a result, what and happened? Dog eats dog, wasn't it? Yeah, literally. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I, I can't remember who submitted theirs first, but one of us was like, right, we discussed it and we were like, right, we're going to make the best pair of underpants yeah. we can. And we had like buttons on it, it had like a self-destruct yep. button, it had like a, like boxing gloves coming Claws out of it. Claws coming off it. Claws, yeah, everything. everything. There was like rockets and stuff. So we, we, did, did, we designed all these underpants and everything and we took it home, didn't tell each other, top secret. <laughs> And then we handed it in, and one of ours got pinned on the board, which yeah. is like once once it got submitted, there was like a board of maybe like like twenty <laughs> who, of them. Who, who was submitted? Who got pinned first, me or you? I don't know. I think one of us one of us got pinned, and the other one saw that it got pinned first, and was like, yeah. right, I'm going to copy. That's so how then, villains are made. That is. <laughs> so then, literally, so then, when the second pair of underpants got pinned on, I was like, hang on a minute. Yeah. He's copied me. Yeah. I said he's he's put that on. I I had that. <laughs> He's seen that and, and added it on. So then I took mine off the board, added something yeah. else, added it on, and we yeah. were really competitive. And everyone else is just like crap, didn't it? It was just like yeah. the, like the odd, the odd one or two gadgets, yeah. whereas we had like seventy gadgets on ours. Yep. And then yeah, the, the, it came to it came to it like a few weeks later. They did the announcement in the school assembly, and uh, someone from year five won, someone yep. from year six won, and then we were both in year eight, I think, or year seven, yeah, maybe. Year eight, I think. And um, I think they read your name out first, and then yeah. that was kind of like I was in my head. I was like, "That's so unfair! Yeah. Like he's copied all my ideas. I've got the best pair of pants going." And then we were we knew someone else would come next, and then it, they read my name out, and somehow yeah. we were like, we looked at each other like absolutely buzzing. Um, Nonsense. Yeah. You know what it is? I've, I've never thought of it this way before, whatever. But, but they must have saw the passion from both of us and thought if. One loses, they'll cause it. It will, it will cause yeah, a beef. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so yeah, so whoever whoever was in year seven, like bad luck yeah. for them. But um, but yeah, we both won this book, and it was just a massive, thick, like chunky Captain yep. Underpants book. Yep. And I think it was like so far in the series, it had like all the books rolled into one, and it had yep. like coloring sections and everything else. It was it. good. It, it, it was, was good. good. Yeah. But I'm sure it had stickers. Yeah, it, like, did, it, did. it was a really good book. So yeah, we had that, and uh, I think I've still got mine at my mum's. Yeah, I've, I've got mine at my I mum's. I think as well. I refused to like never throw it away just yeah. just because that good memory. But but yeah, and I knew I knew somehow that would end up in the end. Yeah, when you get married, I'm definitely going to bring that out in the speech. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> definitely going to bring that up. Oh. So now we've got the viewers' questions, and first of all, we've got a question from Firebolt. So Firebolt asks, as you are a metalcore lover like myself. What are your top three bands? Very good question. Smart, I can't help it. So I have actually, you know, looked at the questions already. So I did, I did have a little bit of preparation mm. for this. So uh, mm. first, first band, no particular order. I'll go with Wage War. This is the t-shirt I'm wearing. Okay. Um, little fun fact, not fun fact, but a little story behind why I like them. So most people that, you know, back in the day, at least on Instagram, not so much now, but you could put a post up and everyone would put hashtags relating to bands or music yeah. or whatever it was you were posting about. And you would also get random people like like your posts and like back. And I always got these little small underground music bands yep. that would like my posts and I just ignore them. And they're just trying to get you to like their page or listen to their new new album or something. 
but this one band, I don't know what it was, it was way draw, but like they, they liked my post or interacted with something. And I clicked it and they only had about 4,000 followers. Yeah. And it said a new album coming out soon and they had like this single. Okay. Um, and for whatever reason, I just decided, you know, I'll, I'll give them a chance. I'll, I'll listen to a single and I absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. And then they, uh, they brought out the album and I loved the album. And then they toured the following year in 2016. I uh, went to see them and they, they had a 25 capacity room at the time. 25 capacity. I think there was 100 people there, but they were for the headliners. And at the time, these were supporting somebody. And the only yeah. there was about 23 people in the room. It was tiny. Was this local, was it? Or? Uh, in Nottingham. So actually, okay. I drove quite far to go see them, to be fair. And uh, yeah. it was a good, like, like I don't know, oh, hour and a half drive. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I went to see them. They were good. I had a picture with the band. And then they kind of like, they didn't necessarily blow up, but they, they got a lot more famous quickly yeah and they've kind of got got quite big at the moment so in in the scene they're very big um yeah. so it's good to see so they now have gone from playing like 25 people to like twenty five thousand people oh, wow. at a festival and if they do a headline show they'll probably get about two and a half thousand people so they've, wow. they've done really well so they've got hundreds of thousand followers yeah, since yeah. they've had the four thousand when you can cross yeah, but obviously because it's alternative music they're never gonna you know headline wembley or yeah. anything but i it's kind of a, a nice story for me because it's like they're the only band i've necessarily i've like kind of got in there yeah. Early. Of course. Uh, second band, uh, I've got to go with Mice and Men. Uh. Um, so me and my girlfriend actually met at one of their gigs. So that's kind of a special band to us. She's got a tattoo on her wrist uh, of the of their, their, their logo, which is like an and sign. Where's your tattoo? Uh, I don't I don't have any tattoos. Uh. Uh, you've probably seen my videos. I'm <laughs> very boring and plain. Uh, you've got quite a few tattoos, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Yeah, probably got about seven, eight, I think, on the top of my head. So you've you were, what, what, go on. Tell the story about your first tattoo. Oh no! <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna drop you in it now. Oh man, uh, this childhood trauma. This is so what? Six, sixteen, seventeen. No, I was eighteen. Okay, eighteen. I was 18. So he gets his very first tattoo. Yeah. So strict Jamaican parent. Yeah. So I come from like a Jamaican household, and I really wanted a tattoo. I was just out shopping in Boring one day in Birmingham, and I had this urge. I was thinking, yeah, I want to do it. I want to get a tattoo. So I went with one of my older cousins. She guided me into this tattoo shop. I went in, asked if you got any availability. In the back of my mind, I was hoping they'd say no. But they said, yeah, we're free, come through, come sit down. I was like, oh, man, here we go. And I decided to get the Jamaican motto tattooed on my chest. That's a really lovely tattoo. I bet, bet your parents loved that. When loved they... it. Yeah. So, loved so it. what happened when you went home and told them? So I told my mum. I showed my mum. I was in my top bedroom at the time. I said, mum, look what I've got. Blah, blah, blah. The Jamaican tattoo. She said, oh, that's lovely. That's lovely, that is. Your dad would love that. I said, really? He'd love that? So I went downstairs. Taking my mum's word for it, even though I was shaking. And he went mad. (laughs) (laughs) He went mad. How long was you out on the streets for? Yeah, probably Uh, a good couple of months. Didn't you have to go move in with your girlfriend or something like that? Yeah. At the the time, time, yeah. yeah. At the time. Mad, mad. Yeah. But no, yeah. Uh, Back to the question. So, um, (laughs) yeah. Uh, Most of men then, so yeah. They've been one of my favourite bands for years. We met at a show. Um, I think she's seen them like about 10, 11 times. But then... um, Go on, how many times do you reckon I've been to see them? Of Mice and Men? Yeah. You know I've seen them a lot. Mm, 30? Close, 31, 31. Okay, okay. okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I've seen them 31 times. So they are one of my favourite bands and I'm, I'm not like pally with them or anything, but like every time they tour, I always go see them. Yeah. Um, and I usually wait behind after and meet them. So I think because they're, su- they're, so, they're such like down-to-earth people when you actually meet the band members, like, that they, they have time for you so yeah i think because of because of that personal touch like you know, m- most bands i'll go to a gig yeah. they finish you go straight home but with them they're probably the only band i'll wait behind to actually yeah. see just because they actually like respect their fans and stuff yeah um so they're a special band to me and my girlfriend and then the third one there's actually Sorry, just um, to add on to that as well I remember like growing up with you i remember you download every single off spotify where you'd yeah. also purchase an album as well, wouldn't you, from like HMV to, oh, yeah, su- to yeah, support yeah. the band? Yeah, so I'd always buy a C- CD, keep it sealed for the collection, because obviously everything's digital nowadays, so I'd, yeah. I'd keep a sealed CD for the collection, and then I'd, I'd, I'd listen to it on Spotify. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've got all the Mice and Men CDs and all of their like deluxe editions and everything. Um, and then the, the third band, uh, the band called Landmarks, so they're okay. a French metalcore band, um, but I really like them. The, You'd actually enjoy some of the music, not all of it, but they they kind of they kind of do like French rap. So okay, it's, okay, it's a bit of French rap, 
yeah. mixed in with a lot of heavy screamo stuff. Um, but but the guy's clean vocals are really good, yeah. so he can rap, sing, and scream. So, I think you might have shown shown me on yeah, before. So yeah. I, th th they're not the biggest band, but um, they're another band that I I've, I caught fairly early on, and I've seen yeah. them seen them probably about six seven times now. So I'm seeing them again in November, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are probably my top three bands right now. Um, all time, I, I, I wouldn't, I don't think Bring the Horizon they're necessarily metalcore anymore. Um, but I love Bring the Horizon, and I have a always have a soft spot for Linkin Park. They've been my favourite band since I can remember. Um, obviously, Chester died in um, 2017, oh, okay. which was which is pretty rough. Rest in peace. Um, so yeah, that, that's a shame. But I'm going to actually see uh, One Thousand Lights in a couple of weeks. So oh, well, um, sorry. Excuse me, what's that? So 1000 Lights is a Linkin Park kind of like tribute show they're okay. doing. Okay. So in the arena that he died in, which was Birmingham, um, luckily I was actually there at his last show. Um, so sorry, just backing up just a little bit. The arena yeah. that he died in? Oh, sorry, I must have said that wrong. He didn't die in the arena, sorry. He, it was his last show before oh, okay. he died. Sorry. Yeah. Is that the one where you held out a cup for him? Or that was actually the show there? before, yeah. So I okay. went I went to the last two shows they played. Uh, I think they, they were going to play Manchester, then London, then Birmingham. Yeah. Manchester got cancelled because they had the Manchester bombings. Yeah. So they, oh, did, yeah. they didn't yeah. feel safe playing yeah. there. And then they went to London, which was a smaller capacity venue. So that was really cool. That's when I crowd surfed and, and I reached out and touched yeah. his hand. Um, and then he played Birmingham. And obviously no one knew that was going to be his last show. So I, I feel like lucky I was there. Yeah. Um, but in his like memoriam, so to speak, um, there's like up, uproar. You know. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I you took, took me there once. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, just quickly <laughs> sidetracking. So uproar is a club <laughs> in Birmingham, uh, yeah. in the UK, and it's kind of like a grebo, rundown, dingy like nightclub dive bar. Yeah. Um, really cheap drinks. Um, loads of just band merch, posters everywhere. There's yeah. like um, drum skins signed by all the band members that have played at the venue. So it is actually a music venue as well, but it's like a, it's like the UK's biggest alternative nightclub. Yeah. Um, so they have a mental health charity and they decided to do like a, an event where they get 1,000 musicians. So Linkin Park have a song called One More Light, okay. which is one of their more famous songs now that he's passed. Oh yeah, I have heard of it. Um, Sorry, so yeah, as a result, they've kind of incorporated the, the name together. So yeah. um, they're getting 1,000 musicians to play Linkin Park songs in one room. Oh yes, yep. I remember um, you saying this. Yeah. And they've got a bunch of musicians to come and play with them, so I'm really yeah. looking forward to that. Um, in, in I think that's actually next weekend, I don't think yeah. it's a couple of weeks, I think it's this, this weekend coming. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, it should be quite emotional. Um, but yeah, they're, they're playing that in, in Birmingham, Utilita Arena, which is where, obviously, I did last show. Yeah. Um, so I've always loved Linkin Park. Um, you actually kind of like Bring Me a bit. You, you kind yeah, of hate I them do. but like them at the same time, don't you? You, do. you always skip the screamy songs, but you really... You certain actually, songs I like, yeah. yeah. So so Wesley's actually like a... What sort of your genre music? You're like rap and grime, aren't you? Yeah, I grew up on reggae. reggae. I grew up on reggae, but I like rap, hip-hop, R&B. So I'm Parts sure I've traumatised of... you in the office with some of my music. Definitely, definitely. And we'll come on to that later, but okay. yeah, definitely. So, the one good time we've had over music though was when we went to watch Scarlet together. Yeah, that was Scarlet good. Yeah, that was that was one of your first gigs. I think I think uh, Wes told me that he'd never been to a gig before. Yeah. And when I was younger, I don't go some, go to so many now, but I used to go to loads of gigs, like yeah. probably like one a week, when at one point maybe two yeah. a week. Yeah. When it gets to like the busy gig season, that's just all I spent my money on. So I forgot to say that in the interest. So yeah, music's a big interest to me. Yeah. Um. So I try and go to as many gigs as I can now, but I used to go to loads. And he said he hadn't been to a gig before, and yeah. you were interested in Scarlord, who's kind of like a rap grime kind of artist, but he he screams and has some yeah. like metal influences. Oh, I can't even tell you what genre Scarlord is. And he actually yeah, you actually came to me and was like, yeah. "This guy's really good." Oh yeah, I did yeah. I so did, I yeah. Uh, so I bought him a ticket for your birthday, didn't I? Yeah. And then um, and yeah, you came with me. I think you were a bit traumatized at some of it. But no, I was uh, ill. I remember that. Yeah. It was around my birthday, and I had a bad migraine. But, but I, think I remember I your little pep talk yourself. you gave me yeah. one day when you said to, you was ill at a gig, weren't you? And you had a bad migraine and you thought to yourself, Oh, yeah, I was at my cement. That you, what did he say? That you're I not going to remember this headache. But you'll remember, but you'll remember what yeah. you did, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And I kept thinking that was like, <laughs> I, I, was in, I was in a mosh pit for my cement in yeah. Birmingham just quickly. And um, it, was a massive, it was a massive room, but Panic at the Disco were headlining. So it was at Slam Dunk. So anyone you know that likes music and stuff yeah. will probably heard of Slam Dunk Festival. And Panic at the Disco were headlining on the main stage, and then the Mice and Men were on the second stage. And they had a big crowd, but they were in a very big room. And the room was quite like empty. So when they had the mosh pit, it wasn't just like a normal little mosh pit. It was a massive mosh pit. 
and I had the worst headache. Um, I had to go to the medical tent and I had to sign like all these waivers <laughs> just to get some paracetamol. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on the verge of like throwing up. It was yeah, that bad. Like, right, it, yeah. was, it was really, really bad. And I was with my mates and even they knew how much I loved the mice and men and wanted yeah. to see them. They were like, mate, if you need to go home, we understand. And I was like, I'm going to battle through it. And I was literally recording like some of the gig, literally about to throw up because it was that bad. But yeah. then I, I thought to myself in my head, which is the point of this is like, you're watching the, I recorded like one of the videos and like um, watching that footage back, it was really good. Yeah. But you don't necessarily remember the headache when you record, you know, you watch the footage back. You just remember the moment where you were, what happened, Worth how good it was. So I literally <laughs> said to you, I gave a bit of pep. You, you did, yeah. You just did. like, man up, grow up, <laughs> enjoy the gig. Come on. And when you're feeling better, you won't you won't remember necessarily yeah. feeling bad. It'll all, you know, merge in, but you'll remember the vision, the memories, yeah. the pictures of the, of the gig. So yeah, and you've been to a few gigs since, 50 Cent, wasn't it? I have, yeah, 50 Cent, yeah. yeah. How was that? Cent. It was good, it was good, but I've always wanted to see 50 live. Managed to get but... your free ticket as well? Oh yeah, that was good. Yeah, I did. So the did system. Yeah. So how did you manage to get your free ticket? Long story, I bought some reseller tickets, didn't I? Um, yeah. Off a reseller website. I felt bad because I gave him the link and yeah. uh, it didn't work out for him, did it? Well, it did eventually. For, I, I can't remember, but bought some tickets second hand. They sent me the ticket, then all of a sudden I got a refund come through from the ticket site. But luckily when they sent me the ticket, I screenshotted it. It was two tickets, um, but they weren't available to view once I had the and refund. And what, like 400 quid on them tickets? 400 quid, yeah. Yeah, and then you got refunded tickets. it and you thought, do you know what, I'm going to gamble and go anyway. And like the badass you are, you got him for free. I did. I played them. <laughs> I played 50. Oh, <laughs> but nah, I'm glad you enjoyed that one. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, um, music, yeah, big thing for both of us really, but you, yeah. you definitely, to summarise, you definitely hate my music, don't you? Nah, so. nah I owe you anyway, I used to come to all the hip-hop clubs with me, and when I used to That's DJ, true. used to come up and down the country with me as yeah. well, so. And when I took you to Uproar that once, you were absolutely traumatised, traumatised. yeah, you were just traumatised. sat in the corner with your cousin. I think I saw like 10 people dressed up as The Undertaker that night. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's for you. Yeah. Anyway, maybe let's move on Good to the next times. one. So, the next question, Thomas. You've got a question from XL Cell, and he asks, or she asks, how many games he, do you have in your collection? He, uh, how many so games I, I only say that because like he's a sound guy, to be fair. So he's commented on quite a lot of my videos. Yeah. Um, and he's, I think he's Australian, but I only found Top out though. the other day, so I actually gave him a shout out the other day. You're international. But, um, yeah, yeah, I'm international, baby. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, he's been commenting on my videos for a while, and I yeah. just randomly he, like clicked his uh, page, and it said that he makes videos. And I was yeah. like, oh, damn, I didn't realise. So since, yeah, he's supported me and liked my videos and commented on them. So I thought I'd, um, I'd, I'd you know, give him a shout out and follow him back. So if you, you know, if you're watching this, then um, make sure you go check him out. Shout out channel. XL Cell. Yeah. So sorry, go on, repeat the question. Yeah, sorry. So how many games do you have in your collection right now? And please be honest. Yeah, so I actually kind of somewhat prepared for this question. Um, I might throw up on screen the actual breakdown because I'm not going to bore everyone with it now. But me and my girlfriend spent about a good hour on Sunday going through my entire room, counting everything. And yeah, we kind of broke it down into like sections of how many like of a certain console I have, and we did like console by console, and then I just added it all up. Yeah. But it's give or take, it was 2,348. Ooh. And that does not include any of the eBay games. So anything that's in the garage that I've considered a business expense or like to sell on eBay, because they're on eBay or they're to be listed on eBay, I don't count them yeah. as part of the collection. So, yeah, I reckon if I put every single game I own together, I'd probably have about 3,000. Um, wow. But there are a lot of duplicates. I am, like, one of those people that, like, oh, there's a variant. I've got to collect it. Yeah. So uh, there's a few duplicates in there. I also collect, like, steelbook cases, as you, as you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I have, I think I had something like 250 or 300 steelbooks when I was counting them yesterday across yeah. all the various consoles. And not all of those have discs in, so I always mention it in my videos, but, like, I like to buy steelbooks. Yeah. And if it's a game I'm not going to play... I'll sell the disc for almost as much as I bought the steelbook for, and then that steelbook then becomes like cheap or free. So smart. I kind of put that in my collection, and that's how I kind of get away with collecting so many of them without having to fork out loads of money for them. Yeah. So most of them won't have any discs in. So whether you're counting them in games or not, I don't know. But um, there's a, there's well over two thousand games in there. So. Yeah, my so. son thinks your house is a toy shop. <laughs> oh yeah, so I think it was uh, was it was it Halloween? Yeah, it was. Yeah, Halloween. Yeah. So I came home from work, was looking for a nice, peaceful, uh, relaxing uh, evening. My girlfriend had just gone to a gym class, and the door went, and I completely forgot it was Halloween. She set you up, didn't she? And she set she set me up. Big, she loves Halloween, so this should have been her job, right? She went she went to the gym, left me yeah. stranded in my house, and I, and it was the one day where I was like, Do you know what? 
I'm going to come home and relax tonight. And I don't usually do that very often. So I was like, I'm always doing something or I'm always busy. Um, Usually nothing important, but I'm always busy or trying to do something. And uh, I was like, I'm going to relax. Came in, the door went, saw his trick or treaters and I was like, oh dear. So I remember there's a bowl with a bag of sweets. So I tipped them all in and there was loads of sweets in there. But the door went that many times that I had to start saying people have one sweet each. Mm -hmm. And then we still ran out. Yeah. And then, and then you, you text me to say, I'm going to bring you some. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. I, I'd just been to Bongo's Bingo, which is yeah. like, a, like a crazy bingo. You just drink and stand on tables and, and uh, sing loads of, of songs drunk. And um, I dressed up as Spider-Man. Cause it was like, it, it was like a Spooderman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, gooby, gooby, please. Yeah. Uncle Ben's. Oh, no. Those are the old days. The old, the old vintage memes. Yep. But now, um, so yeah, I bought the Spider-Man costume. It was like a fancy dress theme because it was near Halloween. So I'd just been, so I put my Spider-Man costume on. Your son loves Spider-Man. Yeah. So I answered the door in my Spider-Man costume. And then while we were there, he was like, oh, let's uh, show, show Elias your, um, yeah. your game collection. So we took him upstairs. And what did he say? Wow, this is like CEX. <laughs> can I buy one, please? <laughs> he was like, this is like the game shop. Yeah, the game so, shop. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Can I buy one, please? So, money for games. so now he thinks that I live in a game shop or I have a game shop in my yeah. house. So uh, yeah, uh, that's how many games I've got. Yeah, it's a core cool um, memory of his. He always mentions it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, in short, that's that's. Uh, yeah. I've got two thousand three hundred and forty-eight. What's the most dupes you've had of a game? I remember you had a lot of NBA on the Switch. Oh yeah, yeah. so I bought. Uh, that was to resell. So kind of. I suppose it still counts because I've yeah. still, still got a lot of them. But oh, I'm sure you have. <laughs> I'm sure you it, have. It worked out two pound a game, right? Yeah. And so the Eng- I say English because it's important, but the English version of NBA 2K20 mm. on Switch was selling for around about fifteen pound new and sealed, ten pound used. And some guy on Facebook Marketplace was selling sixty-two copies for one hundred and fifty pound, but they were in Spanish, so you can still play it. Yeah. You can still select the English language on the game. It comes with a cartridge. It wasn't one of those horrible like download code ones. Yeah. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with the game other than the back cover is in Spanish. So I was like, £2 a game, absolute yeah. no-brainer. I yeah, could no sell brainer. these for a tenner apiece and make, make hundreds of pounds profit. So I went and picked them up and I listed them all for like £10 or £11 and undercut the English version. And I made out it clear it was Spanish. I even like changed the territory to sell it in Spain. So okay. instead of, instead yeah. of opening it up worldwide, I literally opened it up to just yeah. Spain and it still didn't sell, which is really annoying. Um, so I sort of sold probably about 30 or 40 of them, most of them at car boots and then the yeah. rest on eBay. And I've been getting a lot more than two quid each, but like even at like, I think they're up for like 7 99 or, yeah. or six or seven quid at one point, and they just don't sell. So I don't know. Have you at least but... like broke even now? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've sold more than enough to make the money back, but I've probably still got about 20, 25 copies left. Uh, so that's probably obviously the most um, I've bought. In terms of variance, um, I don't know. Uh, I quite like the Uncharted series. That's one of my favourite series. Yeah. Um, so I've got a few variants of those and maybe Zelda. Um, so it's like cer- yeah. certain games I'll get a few copies of. Um, I, I might think... be wrong, but you, did you have a lot of like steelbooks of Metal Gear Rising? Oh, yes. Like... That was another thing. Yes. As a car, uh, I've actually still got them. I need to put them on my eBay store at some okay. point. But yeah. um, I bought from a car boot 50p each for a bunch of Metal Gear Revengeance steelbooks. That's it. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're 50p each but then like at the time they were only selling for like four or five pound on ebay so i was yeah. like that'll do like you know 50p to a fiver that's fine how, how many have you got to numbers uh, i think there was like 30 in the bag maybe 35 but the problem i had was they'd been rained on and i think that's why they were 50p yeah. they'd been rained on and they'd kind of gone a bit like rusty um so as a result every case looks different so i can't just do a job lot listing because if they're all sealed and new you could just obviously put quantity 30 and make the listing once yeah, but with course. this case i was kind of like i'm gonna to have to sell them all individually yeah. because people are going to want to know what condition it's in before buying it but because i've done the typical thing i usually do and just like if it's too much stress or hassle or time i'll, I'll chuck it to the side i've moved house twice since then and yeah. took them with me both times um and uh, i've still got them and i have you about, not listed any of them? well about two months ago i decided to list some and i listed them and they sold and they've actually shot up in price like they're, okay. they're quite collectible so I think I'm pretty sure you bought one of me as well. I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah. Sure. I think you had one when you pre-ordered it. Yeah. But you had an open car. I think that might be in my collection, actually, because yours wasn't rusted. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I sold that one for 20 quid. And yeah. I was like, right, when it sells, I'll just replace the images. And I just never got around to doing it. So it's, it's still on my list to do. But they're, they're holding their value well. So That's good. 
by waiting three or four years, I've actually yeah. you know got a good investment on that. So by selling, I think I've sold two so far. So that's yeah. already made my money back. Probably the right time as well with the new Metal Gear. That's just yeah, nice. yeah. But that that was just like a fluke, like gamble in yeah. a sense. Like it's it's lucky that I've waited three four years and they've gone up in price. Yeah. And the fact that I've waited three four years to list them is quite embarrassing. So uh, okay. So he's got another question from XL Cell. So he asks, would you ever consider selling all of your collection? Would you? I don't know if I'd sell all of it. I think there's there's a lot of games. In, like, I, like I love gaming. Gaming is a passion of mine. So yeah. unless I completely fall out of love with gaming, I feel like I wouldn't ever sell it all. Yeah. But there, there will be a point where I need to sell it or I need to raise some funds or whatever. So maybe we downsize or we need the room for something else. So it's kind of like there's going to be a point where something's got to give and I'm going to have to sell some of those games. Yeah. Um, I think the, the PS3 collection, it's, so we'll come on to that in a moment, but I think with the PS3 collection, I've got so many of them that like, I'm never going to play all of them. Yeah, so of course. there'll be a point where I'll be like, do you know what, let's keep the best ones that I'm actually going to play and sell the rest. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say what, I probably what's, will What's do. the limit though? What's the, what's the goal? Well, I'm, I'm almost there in terms of uh, space. <laughs> Okay. So in my okay. bedroom, uh, obviously, when I lived at my mum's house, as you yeah. know, I had, I had like a seven meter long bedroom, yeah. and I probably had about three or four bookcases with room for more if I needed it. And I managed to, you know, fill most of it. And when I moved out, I luckily when I was renting, I had another quite big bedroom, but I had to share it with my eBay stuff. Yeah. So I left most of the games at my mum's house. And then when I bought the house, I've got this tiny little box room now, and uh, it fits my bookcases on. But we're almost at the limit now, so yeah. it's, it's getting to the point where the shelves are full and there's no room. So when I remember, when I remember our road trips up to Ikea, getting you bookshelves and that yeah, space. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like it's like where you know it gets to a point where you've got no room to physically buy any more stuff, yeah. unless I get like a storage unit or something. And then you got to get to that point if you're putting it in a storage unit, what's the point in owning it? Of course. So yeah, something's got to give. But um, but yeah, I would I would consider selling it. Yeah. So, so Tom, we've got a question now from Retrohead. And this is a great question. I'd love to know the answer to this. So he says, Hi mate, my question is, what is your favourite PS2 game? Good question. So so Retrohead's actually my very first subscriber, um, just before we go into the game. So he, I uploaded that video with the 90 games and I thought, do you know what? I don't know if this is going to get three views, 300 views, 3,000, I don't know. Yeah. And it got about 10, 15 views and I think I got a comment or something. But then uh, he actually shared the video. On okay. His channel. Okay. And then I probably got I only got about five subscribers from it, but um that kind of gave me a bit of a boost to like then, you know, yeah. five went to fifteen and then to a hundred yeah. and you know what once I got sort of taken off it it's it started to go well. But um but yeah, I feel like, you know, I owe him a bit because he, he was that's my nice. first sub. So. Yeah, that's nice. But yeah, good question. So he's actually asked me a question before in January. I, I had put out some uh, video ideas and he wanted me to do a PS two collection. Yeah. So Is well, that his uh, thing, is it PS? I, I think so. Yeah, he collects Nintendo and um, and PlayStation, and I okay. know his dad collects Sega. He did it. I actually watched the video the other day. Shout um, out to Retrohead. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he showed off his dad's Sega collection, which is really cool. Oh, wow. um, but yeah, so favorite PS2 game. So I will I will go through my PS2 collection at some point on the channel um, yeah. soon. It's on my to do list. Um, but I actually bought just a couple of games in, with me actually, just to uh, help with this question. I'm gonna pretend like I haven't uh, seen them now. Yeah, so this is just for display, but uh, Guacamole, I've mentioned it on my channel a few times, great game, my, one of my favourite like indie games. Um, but yeah, the PS2, so uh, I picked out three highlights, but what I realised was that they're actually all racing games. Um, okay, okay. But my first PS2 game ever was FIFA 06. Was that it? Was is my, that with yeah. Rooney and Ronaldinho on the front? Uh, Van Nist, I know it was, yeah, it was uh, Ronaldinho, yeah. But I remember, I remember Van Nistelrooy and Rooney was like the, part, the strike partnership, so I was yeah. on United on career mode. And that was like the first FIFA game that like it looked realistic at the yeah. time, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" I remember um, I got that free in a bundle from PC World. Yeah, yeah. So that, <laughs> that was, but FIFA Six was my first FIFA. Yeah. Um, but then I picked up a few. There's a few other games I just wanted to discuss. So the first one is Cars. Um, this is one of them games where you know, if you, show, you know, yeah. as a 29 year old, if I show this to someone, they're going to be like, "Oh, it's a kid's game." No, I love that on the PS. But this, I don't this is such a phenomenal game. If anyone likes racing games, yeah. like, you don't even have to be a Disney fan to enjoy yeah. this game. That was really good. And you could actually drive around Radiator Springs and it was like kind of like semi-open world. So that was pretty cool. I made my Christmas. Yeah. Like that, did you ever play this game? Did we ever play this together? Cell Damage? No, I don't think we did. So Cell Damage, it, it got a PS4 remaster. Fortunately, it never got a platinum or anything. It only had like 10 trophies. So I, I completed it really quick and I never really had a chance to go back to it. But it's like a multiplayer driving game. 
and it's cell shaded graphics hence the name cell damage okay, but it's okay. cell shaded like borderland style and you drive around on these maps and it's it's not like mario kart although yeah. there are races actually so i guess there are like mario kart sections but you have like weapon boxes okay and you can have like boxing gloves chainsaws um you can fly and there's certain things to do in each level like there's a few secrets but you basically just go around and just batter the crap out of each other mm. um and it's just like a, like a fight it's like a fighting slash driving game okay. um, so if anyone likes is it more like a more time black metal as always not yeah i guess so. like, like it's it's free plus but i don't know how it is because it's like quite violent for it for a free plus game is it black metal is that the name of the game you're thinking of uh, twisted metal twisted metal yeah with the clown yeah, yeah. i've that's... actually never properly played it but i have seen yeah you know, as a playstation fan i've i've seen it i just not I've got the PS3 version, so I want to get around okay. to playing that at yeah. some point. Um, but yeah, my favourite PS2 game, Burnout Revenge. So it's a hard toss-up between Burnout 3 Takedown and yeah. Burnout Revenge. But um, I've got to ask you though, you've bought three racing games. Yeah. Give me a game that's not a racing game. Other than FIFA. Other than FIFA. Ooh, um, do you know, the, the PS2 I, I had for a very limited time. So I got the PS2. And I had, a, and, and to be fair, another game I had was WRC, which is another racing game. But I had, yeah. I had a handful of racing games, FIFA. I, I, I hadn't really got into like shooting games yet. Okay. Um, I think I might have had a Tomb Raider game yeah. at some point. And SSX. Yeah, I had SSX. So that, that was unbelievable. Um, but yeah, I was really into sports games as a kid. So I never really, I haven't really got anything else to, to discuss. But yeah. Maybe like the Simpsons game or something. Okay. Like that was a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, but then I got the PS3 probably a few years later. So in that period, I wasn't like collecting games; I was just playing them. And obviously, I didn't, I couldn't afford to buy it myself, so I yeah. just got them for birthday and Christmas. So I had a very like modest PS2 collection. Um, Army Men, that's okay. my one. Um, Sergeant Zeros. Yeah, that was it. I think I had a PS1 before the PS2, and I had all the Army Men games. And then I yeah. think I bought like a PS2 version, and it's pretty much exactly the same. But yeah. um, but that was good. Uh, and yeah, and then I got the PS3, and that's kind of when like I completely just shifted from the PS2 to PS3. So the PS2 for me, whilst I remember playing it, I don't have like tons of like memories of it yeah. other than those those games there. Um, but Burnout, the Burnout games, unbelievable. Uh, I think one was pretty like it was just the first game, yeah. a bit basic. Two was okay, and then somehow three, like I remember Is that takedown. Yes, so three. I remember playing that at a friend's house before I bought it myself, and yeah. uh, that was unbelievable. Like, yeah, I just, I just love how you could just, you could just race each other, and, and it's just like smashing into each other, take them out, they go flying off the track, yeah. and then you spawn again. It's like, but there's like, <laughs> there's like certain mini games where you could just like try yeah. and take out as many people as possible, and your car would be on like one percent health, and you're trying to beat the high yeah. score, and like it was really good. And then um, Revenge was pretty much more of the same, but for me, you could like shunt cars. So okay. every other Burnout game, you go into the back of a car, yeah. you crash, yeah. and it was really frustrating. But then with Burnout Revenge, they added this like shunt feature, so okay. you could like be racing around the streets, and if you accidentally hit a car, instead, like if you if you crash, it takes you out the immersion mm. a bit. So uh, instead of like crashing, unless it was like a big like truck, like you would you would hit the car, and it would push the car in front into another car, and you'd get more points. Okay. So for that reason, it was basically, but it was it was burnout free with yeah. with a bit extra, um, and then Dominator wasn't wasn't that great. Yeah, I don't I don't think I remember Dominator. Dominator was okay, and then um, then Pat Burnout Paradise. Yeah, buddy. A shout out Burnout Paradise. <laughs> like, I feel like Burnout Paradise <laughs> and the old Burnout games are completely different. Yeah. As, as great as they are, I don't see them in the, like the same series because like yeah. Burnout Paradise is completely open world. And Just that opening and, soundtrack. Uh, yeah, sure. Was it Paradise City? Yeah. And even Burnout Three, I can't remember what the uh, the thing was now, but there was like a titled song, and it was so good, like La Lazy Generation. That was it. He said like, "We are the Lazy Generation." That was that was like you, you fi later. fired the game up, and that come up on the main menu. Yeah. That, that was that was a hit. That I'll was have a listen later. I can't remember. Like the Tony Hawk soundtrack, you just you just certain soundtracks you just remember. Yeah. FIFA as well. Yeah. But yeah. the thing with FIFA for me, they all just blend into one. Yeah. So we we've got a colleague that works in the office with us. He works Jedi Seventeen, and he's yeah. um, obsessed with football. And a FIFA song will come on the radio, and he will tell us what FIFA game that came from. We've been playing FIFA how long? I started in 03. So I started around... We used to play together, to be fair. So 06 yeah. was the first one I owned, but I had played some previous Can't ones. But no. But uh, we've been playing Can't FIFA now. Like, it, 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 almost 20 years. And Can't exactly. beat me. Uh, I'm going to just pass over that comment. Yeah. I beat you a few times, but you do, you do always find a way to beat me. Even if I'm winning, you'll find a way to come back and score a 90th minute winner. It's so annoying. Just playing with you. 
<laughs> but, um, but yeah, Jed, he, he can just remember every yeah. single FIFA song and, yeah. and what game it came from. Like, we know it's a FIFA song, but yeah. we can't remember what game it came from. He can tell us exactly what yeah. FIFA that came from. So, impressive. Crazy. I'm just going to go off script a little bit as well. Um, touching onto what you said about Retrohead, how he was the first subscriber and how he yeah. shared your videos. How have you found the, the gaming community since really, not the gaming community, but like the, the reselling community? YouTube you, community as a general or? In general, in general, now that you've, you're out there making videos, have you found that other people in this similar, doing a similar thing to you, have they been accepting of you? Are they supportive of you? Yeah, so I, I don't get like loads of comments and stuff, but I do, yeah. you know, you get a few regular comments and you get the odd random person that stumbles across your video. Yeah. But um, there's a few people on there that I, I watch and they've, like, I've commented on theirs and they've commented back on mine. So I think it is, it is a friendly community. That's nice. I think especially when, I found like the smaller niches uh, support each other more because obviously nice. you're trying to help each other grow. Uh, there's a few people I've like commented on in the past, and then they've 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 gone on to get quite a few subscribers, and then you don't really like see them comment on your videos and yeah. as much anymore. Um, but no, that's all part of the growth. Um, but no, the the community as a whole is really good. I think the thing with my channel, for better or worse, it's I I really enjoyed gaming videos and I really enjoyed eBay videos. Yep. Yeah. And I didn't really notice anyone doing both, so I tried to target the like game collection as well as the eBay reselling. So it's it's a bit of a niche that like some I know there's a fact that like some people watch my channel for the game videos, yeah, and then other people watch it for the reselling videos, and those that watch the reselling videos probably won't click on a video that of says course. I bought this many games for my collection, or here's my PS2 collection yeah. for example. So. It is a toss up between like trying to find a balance between appeasing both audiences, but no, the, the actual community as a whole is good. I think the eBay reselling community though um, on YouTube is good, but on on Facebook it's it's rife, man. <laughs> there's like there's so many reselling communities on yeah. Facebook that I've joined a few, and if someone's new and asking like a, a newbie question, they will just be like Google it or what a stupid question to ask yeah. like no one's supportive of new people they will or if someone asks a dumb question they're just like google's free yeah. or if someone says oh i've picked up this bundle of games and i've never sold games before um you know what's the best way to go about it they'll be like ebay sold and it's just like really blunt and everyone kind of like you, you might get the odd person that helps but uh, yeah. for the most part obviously it's a very competitive industry like like with with the game collecting you're supporting each other you're helping people collect other games there's so many of certain games in existence that you know people can find a game and be like, oh, that's cool, I want one. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, I'll help you find one. Whereas with eBay reselling, it's like, oh, I found something really cool. Yeah. I don't want to help you find something cool as well because I can just resell that again. Of course. So it's quite competitive. So um, yeah. some people are friendly, but I think you know the underlying tone with the reselling thing is everyone's there. It's like dog eat dog. Everyone's yeah. there to make their own money. So this is a question from Maya. Um, Maya works at Eleven Views with us. And Maya has asked, hey, what is the best profit margin you've had on an item? Good question. Um, on eBay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with eBay. So I've got two answers for this question. Um, one of them in terms of profit margin, so percentage wise, the best thing I bought was a game bundle off my mate. Um, and he- he, does, came, does he, he know yet? Kind of, I'm, I'm pulling it out of myself here. I hope he doesn't tell me. <laughs> so it wasn't actually, the, I bought the bundle off my mate, but he yeah. bought it off someone else on my behalf. So he had a colleague that was selling a bunch of gaming stuff and um, he basically messaged me and was like, oh, there's a guy that's selling like a PS1, an Xbox original yeah. and a bunch of controllers and it's all been in his loft, it's all dusty. So he doesn't want much for it, but how much would you offer? So I wanted to give him a fair price. It was in lockdown, so like prices were high. So like... It was probably more than I wanted to pay, but I was adding it up and I thought, right, it's worth about 200 quid. And I don't know why, but I offered like 150 pounds or something. For the for the bundle? For the whole bundle, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Um, I, didn't, I didn't really want to like, you know, think he, him to think I was ripping him off. Yeah. So he went back to his mate and was like, um, you know, here's his offer, blah, blah, blah. So he said to me, oh, here you go. I've got the bundle, come pick yeah. it up. And he said to me when I got there, he's like, oh, by the way, he's like, I did it for 100 for you. He's mm. like, 150. He, he was like, 150 is too much. So I, so wow, I, so I slipped him 20 quid. <laughs> <laughs> like, and genuinely I did he know? no but genuinely I didn't know like it wasn't like I saw what was in the yeah. pile and uh, you know tried to be sly like I genuinely didn't know so the game in question is like a at the time was like a five ten pound game yeah but as I was going through them it was sealed Ooh. now it was it was the original halo on the Xbox Ooh. 
And yeah, so with like Nintendo games, if you've got like the original Mario game, original Zelda, obviously that you're yep. sitting on an absolute like gold mine. But with the Xbox, it's a modern day like yep. platform. But um, Halo is obviously so iconic. Like it's one of the most iconic video game characters ever. So to have the original, but also I did a bit of digging and it was actually the first print of the oh, original as well. I didn't know that. So there was, I think there was a second print and there's like a classic yeah. version. So those were a lot less, but we're in, in peak lockdown. Everyone had money. Prices were high. Yeah. And, you know, if it was open, it's only worth a tenner. So my yeah. 150 if offer was, yeah, if, yeah. My, if, my, if my 150 offer, you know, was fair. Um, but because it was sealed, I did a bit of research and I looked and people were selling like graded ones for like a thousand pounds or something like that. Wow. And some were selling like ones with rips in the plastic for like 300 and it had, um, and that yeah. sold. Like I looked at sold listings and some had sold for like 250 when it had a rip in it. This was like as mint as possible. Wow. Like had the tiniest little te- like micro little chip in it. Yeah. But everything that's perfect. So I, um, I put it on eBay and someone sent me an offer for 425 quid. Jeez. And I, when I did my calculations, the amount of games in that bundle was quite a lot. If there's consoles, controllers, it probably owed yeah. me about three or four pounds just for that game, like if that. So in terms of like profit margin, that was like wow. the most ridiculous sale. Um, I still don't think I've told my mate Adam about that. So yeah. if, I know Adam's actually subscribed to the channel. So if Adam actually <laughs> is watching this, I doubt he'll get this far. But if he has a, is actually watching this, then I, I hope yeah, you don't yeah. tell the guy you, you bought it off because uh, he'll be absolutely devastated. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, I've just sold this for 100 quid and someone's just sold it for yeah, 400 yeah. pounds. So. But then, yeah, the rest of the bundle did great as well. Yeah. That got like two, 300 quid extra. So uh, I probably made about six, 700 pound off that bundle wow. alone. Um, but then the actual single item that yeah. I got the, the most like profit from, yeah. um, you know, like the Lego games. I was going to say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I actually didn't realise what it was until I found it. I saw it on Facebook Marketplace. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Looked it up, did a bit of research, and then I immediately messaged the guy. I had like the, the, the gutting thing was there was like eight of them. Yeah. And I messaged the guy and said, I'll, I'll buy all eight. And he wanted like 100 to 200 pound each. Okay. But I was like, okay, like I'm willing to drop like a thousand pound on all these. So I messaged him. He's like, oh, sorry, mate. Someone's picked up like six and he's going to, he might get the other two at payday. However, if you if you got the money for the other two, you can yeah. have them now. I'm not gonna hold it for him. So I was like, you know what? I'll take the two you've yeah. got. And they're basically like developer bricks. So when sure. someone makes a Lego game, uh, the actual makers of the game, they get given like a gift at the end of the game with the uh, figure from the game okay. in like, the glass case in the shape of like a Lego brick, and then it'll have the details of the game on it and what consoles it was on. Nice. And after doing a bit of research, there's about a hundred of these bricks okay. um, at the time. There's probably more now. Um, but there's like a hundred odd of these bricks, but like, it's kind of like a, a secret like collection, like, yeah. like Lego heads love it, yeah. but they're so expensive. So someone to have the whole collection is, would probably be impossible because there's only so many of these bricks made. And, and if you've got given one of these bricks for working on the game, why would you want to give it away? Yeah. So he said he obtained it from, obtained the Lego bricks from someone he knew that um, worked on the game and they, he gave them him or he bought them off him or something. So, um, so yeah, there was one brick and it was Dumbledore from Harry Potter and he wanted 200 pound each, but he gave me the two for 300 and the other one wasn't a great buy because yeah. I've got it on my store now still is okay. 18 months on. And I've, so out the two I bought, I've still got one left and I think I've reduced it. Which one's that? I think it's, um, it's a character from Batman. I can't remember which one. Oh, okay. uh, maybe like the Joker or something. Yeah. Not the Joker, but it's another character. Oh, so you've got not just Harry Potter, you had... Um, I bought two, yeah. So I, I thought there were the eight of them. I thought there were Harry Potter characters. No, they were all random characters, but six of them got sold. So there's yeah. like there was a few good ones in there. I think there was a ha- like actually Harry Potter, and there was um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean as well. So there's a few good characters in there, like Jack Sparrow. Um, so those sold, and I was left with this random character. Yeah. And the only reason this this good one was left was because it was broken. So I'll move on to that in a sec. But um, but yeah, so I've still got that one character left. Um, they were worth about two hundred pound each in lockdown. I've obviously dropped a bit since, yeah. um, and because it's a bit of a random character that no one really wants, I suppose it's it's a hard sell. Um, but this one that was hundred pound, I um, took it home, and the Lego brick had actually come off, yeah. like, and it's, it's it's sealed in a glass case. If you look them up on the internet, you'll see they come in a glass case, and there's physically no way of getting into that figure without yeah. breaking it or yeah. drilling through it. Um, so I was thinking, like, okay, I could sell it broken because it's and it was a yeah. rare character. Like I looked and I don't. There's not really many sold on eBay because they come up so infrequently. But um, I knew it was a rare character. I looked in the forums on Reddit and stuff, and this was like the one yeah. everyone wanted. And um, I kind of thought, like, you know, you get like a trading card and you put yeah. it in a sleeve. Like we used to collect the matches. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Well, like if you tap a trading card, yeah, uh, you, it will shift. The gravity will take the card down the packet. Okay, yes. Yeah, so rather yeah, than yeah. push down on the card, you risk damaging yeah. the card. You just tap it and it slides down. Yeah. So I thought, like, surely the same thing must happen with this Lego brick. So um, I was there for like ten minutes, like, <laughs> minutes, and you've got a tiny little window yeah. to work with. And I was doing what this. was it, what was he trying to put on his head? So I think his his head and body had come off the legs. So the legs just had two little sticks and the body had like two Ooh. holes and it needed to go. So I managed, So I kept trying it and trying it and trying it. Couldn't get it to work. Yeah. And the bloke, when I bought it off for me, said, I've been trying it for ages. He said, yeah. he said, if this was complete, he said, I would be able, he said, I would be selling this for much more. He yes. said, but I can't get the bloody body back on. Yeah. So I was like, fair enough. So I, I thought, Do you know what, I'll have a go when I get home. And I kept having a go. Five, ten minutes I was there. And randomly, the head and the body like landed on top of the legs perfectly. Ooh. And it was like, it wasn't on. Like it was panicked, it's, didn't you? If I bet put, you panicked. Yeah, yeah, honestly. If I, if, I, <laughs> if I just wobbled it, it would have yeah. just completely fell off. Um, so I had it there like this, and my hands were literally shaking. So I kind of thought, you know, oh like, God, so, oh so I held it like this in this hand, and I just smacked it on my palm of my hand, uh -uh. and it, it shifted down slight, slightly, but enough that if I like tipped yeah. it upside down, it didn't come off. And I thought, oh my God, I'm a genius. Like, I was like, I've done uh -huh. it. So I smacked it again, and it went down even further. And literally, after one or two smacks, it was, it was fully on, on. Fully on, yeah. And like the gravity just shifted the brick down, and then yeah, uh, yeah so I sold that for eight hundred and seventy-five pound to some random person. In Big eight seven five. Honestly, eight hundred and seventy-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was last year. Yeah, that was, that was the first proper like um, like big sale. Yeah. Made. Like other than the Halo game, which is a bit of a fluke. Yeah, yeah. That was the that was the biggest like big boy money. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's that's wow, that, that's a sale. But uh, you know, you're never gonna find them yeah. again. Um, I've only found them once, and I've never yeah. found any since. So that's the ups of of reselling. Yep. Have you made any big mistakes buying like a big purchase and losing money um, or something? Or don't you really buy big purchases? It depends. Like in terms of losing money, there's a few things I bought and they've lingered for so long. You just yeah. reduce them and you, and you kind of take a bit of a gamble. Like yeah. you don't just learn this stuff overnight. You you always start reselling with a niche. So I, mm -hmm. I like video games. So I used to go to car boots for myself. Yeah. And then it's only when you find something that you've already got yeah. that you know is valuable. You're okay. kind of like, oh, okay. They're selling that for three pounds. Well, I paid yeah. twenty for that, so I know that's good. Um, so yeah, so then that kind of how I got into it is just in that sense, like buying things I enjoy, and then yeah. and you kind of take a bit of a gamble and you'll buy something you think might be worth some money. So there, there's probably a few like toy bundles that I bought, like I know, like I used to buy loads of like Peppa Pig stuff, and it got to the point where I was buying so much of it that I just couldn't be bothered to list it all. Yeah. So I, I remember just going to a car boot and just selling it. <laughs> Have so it, I probably I probably didn't make a loss on it, but I probably just sold it for what I paid for it. And yeah. I bought a big bunch of Sabutio stuff, massive collection of Sabutio stuff. Mm. And I've still got a lot of it now, but like I sold off all the big boxes. I made a profit on it, but I sold off all the big boxes, all the pitches and everything. Everything that was good. And then there's a box left of scrappy bits, but they're all stuff that can still be sold, like play yeah. they're all vintage play pitches. There's like little footballs, but those footballs are mm. from like then like there's one that's like the Italian ninety or Italian eighty it's something World Cup. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, um, and I looked it up, and it goes for like eight quid just for a little plastic ball. Mm. But then I've just never had the time to like yeah. properly go through and sift through it all. And it seems like a lot of work, so I've yeah. kind of put it off. Um, the other big like gambles or fails, I guess, is like a lot of it is just stuff that doesn't sell. So okay. it's it's not that I've lost money. Yeah. It's just I haven't made profit yet, and I've been sat on it in a while. Yeah. Um, you, you're very patient with this, are not you? You can sit on something for years. And... Yeah, like pe people will send me an offer, and in my head, I know it's a good offer. Yeah. But I actually think, do you know what? I could get more for that, or yeah. if I'm patient, I'll get more for that. Yeah. So I actually like decline the offers or I'll counter offer when yeah. I know I shouldn't. Someone sent me an offer for £150 on a signed steel book um, the other day. Is that the, the uh, Forza one? Forza one, yes. Yeah. So, so, so that's, that's a signed steel book found on Facebook. £20 or £40, I can't remember actually. I uh, went to pick it up yeah. and the guy actually won it in a raffle and he didn't play games. But the guy that donated it in the raffle yeah. was a, a maker of the game or whatever on the development team. So he yeah. donated it and this, this random guy won it. And then yeah. he, he said, I don't play games. So I decided to sell it. So I picked it up off him and I don't know what it's worth. 150 yeah. might have been a really good offer, but I had it listed for 300 pounds. I had it up higher and I know it's not going to sell for five or 400 quid, but I like reduced it yeah. and it's at 300 quid at the moment. And someone sent me an offer for 150. And I was like, I think it was at 325 and it, yeah. was, it was less than 50% of what I had it up for. And because it was less than 50%, I thought, well, they're willing to pay 150. I'll do like, I think I did 200 back. And I thought, okay. you know what? They might come back with 175. Yeah. And if and they you do 175, I'll, I'll take it. And he didn't, he declined it. Oh, and in my head, I was like, I'm such an idiot. Like, I should have <laughs> took the 150. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I'm quite patient. Like, yeah. I, I will wait if need be. Like, I'm That's not. In a, I'm not in a rush to get them. Like, the eBay is a is a hobby. It's a yeah. side hustle. Yeah. Um, it's not like I'm not dependent on the money. So yeah. I'm just happy to to you know to wait That's for certain good. things. But yeah, there's a few there's a, there's a few items I bought in the past. Yeah. Uh, bundles like their watch bundle. So I've mentioned it on my channel before with the watch bundle. Uh, so yeah, so one of the watches actually <laughs> that was the best watch in the whole bloody bundle. That was that was a that's like an eight hundred pound watch, and uh, and I gave you that for your birthday, didn't I? Last you did. Year. Thank you very birthday much. Birthday and Christmas present. Thank you, my bro. Uh, but that's got a, quite a special meaning. That's why I gave it you. So your birthday is actually eleventh of November, so it's it eleven is, yeah. eleven. Um, 11 and the watch is from the eleven collection, and it actually has the word like the word eleven written yeah. on the watch. So that so Beautiful. for me, and you said you wanted a silver watch, so for me it was a perfect present. It was unfortunately it was one of the most expensive ones in the set, but uh, uh, you know it's worth it. I'm grateful. Uh, no, it's fine. It's worth <laughs> it. Yeah, I'd, like, I'd rather see it go to a good home. But with, yeah. with that collection, um, my family have been, you know, telling me about it for a while. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, if you sold any more of them watches, or yeah. want to waste the money, but sometimes things are best yeah. kept. But no, I've <laughs> not yeah, a secret. But, but, you know uh, what I mean? But no, I, I, I'll, I'll make a proper YouTube video on it, and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say how much I spent on it. I'll show everything that I've got left. Is this the watches? Yeah, which is oh, probably, man. I probably remember, like I remember when you called up. me, I think it was at yeah. Morton Stanley with my son, weren't I? We were yeah. in the park together. Yeah. He's like, oh, where's, where's, look what I've just got, look what I've just got. Thing no, is, I saw you at the yeah. car park, me and Nicole when, were at oh, Starbucks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, and Tom's over there. And he's got, his, he's got, he's in this guy's boot. <laughs> and you, you wound your window. That's what you do, man. And you were like, watch this, watch, watch this yeah. guy, like dodgy dealer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, man, I still stand by that, but that bundle's not a fail. I failed. So I've listed um, a portion of it, yeah. and it's unfortunate that what I listed to make the, the listings easier for me mm. was there was one specific watch that was the same watch, just mm -hmm. different colours. So for me, it was a no-brainer. Let's list that watch, duplicate the listing, yeah. and uh, get as many listed as I can. So I've listed a hundred of the same watch. Now it's not a UK brand, yeah, so that's, that's the so that, and that's the biggest sticking point. So mm. a lot of the sales I've had on those watches, I've sold about seven of the watches, and they've, they, I think five or six of them have gone abroad. Yeah, and I so have maybe, like, maybe eBay is the wrong platform to sell. Potentially, it. yeah. So I need to look into it. But there's a bunch of watches that I still haven't listed, and it's my own fault. I just yeah. haven't had like chance. But like, or I see it as a chore. And that's couldn't, the problem. Just thinking out loud, yeah. couldn't you like approach some small watch retailer in America and just maybe. message them directly? But look, I've got this bundle of watches. Even if it's not America, bomb. yeah, but it's, it's just yeah. big in America. But I, I, I do want to make a proper video on it because I feel like once I make the video, that's mm -hmm. going to give me accountability for it, and I will, I will get the rest listed. True. Um, but yeah, my I spent a lot of money on it, and my family were like, "This is, a, you know, it could be a good deal, whatever." Yeah. And they looked at it, and they were like, "Yep, you do the math, you break it down. Per watch was like eight quid, and some of these watches retail uh, yeah. that's retail stickers on for you've seen it two hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So it was an absolute no brainer. The yeah. bloke had a watch shop; he sold the shop. This was the overstock, so it's yeah. all the stuff that people would have tried on, whatever. So not everything has a box, but they are as new. Yeah. So it was a, for me, it's a really good buy, but I, yeah. I, I failed by not listing it all, and yeah. it's kind of like you know what you, you shouldn't look at it going. that way. If you because your granddad really loved that watch that you gave him, didn't he? Yeah. So my granddad passed away a few a few months Rest ago. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest yeah. Rest in peace. So he picked but out he, the gold one of these. Yeah. And. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I so, remember so, you telling me how much he loved it. Yeah, so that was that was a watch that he wanted. So I, I think I, um, I I sold him that for what I paid for it. Um, yeah. So with the watches, they worked out about eight pound each. But then yeah. those those expensive ones, he actually sold me for ten percent of the retail price, and they were they were yeah. quite expensive. Um, so yeah, so he he had that watch, um, and every time I used to go around, he, he'd say to me like. Yeah. I sold any more watches yet. No and pressure. He, and he, he, he was like my biggest hater, but at the yeah. same time, like biggest supporter. Like he yeah. wanted me to do well on them. So every time I said, do you know, I haven't, like at this point, when I went around there, I might have only had them two months. Yeah. Like you listed, it, you sold any yet. Yeah. I was like, well, I've listed a few, but you know, out them few, they haven't sold. Yeah. He, he doesn't quite grasp that, like with the yeah. it's, a, it's a game of patience. You're not just going to list it and it sells. So, um, so yeah, so with these watches, I, I only listed maybe like five or 10% of them at the time. And then, he, every time I went around, listed anymore yet. Yeah. But, but one good memory I've got though is every time I went around, he'd always be disappointed. He'd be like, oh, dead, yeah. dead money, you wasted your money. <laughs> and you need to get them sold. Yeah. And then one of the last times I saw him actually, I went around and uh, I showed him yeah. my store. And uh, there's like a watch section. Yeah. And in that section, there was like 127 watches that I'd listed. And I think I picked up about 250 in this bundle. So I'm halfway there. Uh, the only annoying thing is the remaining ones are all like individual watches. So it's going to take a lot of time to individually yeah. list them all. Whereas the and ones the, and the straps as well. Yeah, remember. kind of the ones I listed were like duplicate listings. Yeah. So, um, but I had 127 listed, and I scrolled through, and he said how how good they looked and how professional the photos were and everything. So, 
so that was good so I kind yeah. of like made it proud in the end yeah yeah. But, um, but no, overall on that that bundle, it's kind of like a it's a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a long t for me. That was a long term investment. I knew I wasn't going to sell them overnight. I think my family thought you know I'd get rich quick, but I, yeah. I knew it wasn't going to be that, and it's going to take a lot of time and effort. And I've just got to be patient and find that time and effort. Yeah. Okay. So, Moyes also asked if you are registered as a reseller for tax purposes. I think she might be the tax man herself. <laughs> this is yeah. the bane of my life. Yeah. So I've been... We see you haters. Yeah. So <laughs> I've been selling my personal... So as I said with the car boots, I started out going for myself, yeah. buying stuff myself, occasionally I'd see the odd thing. Yeah. And I started selling a couple of things on eBay, got a bit of feedback. Uh, and then I thought, you know what, I know how to sell now. So then yeah. I started reselling. It was just a bit of a hobby. I was I was selling a lot of it was my own personal possessions and I wasn't really meeting the tax threshold or anything. But then yeah. it got to the point in lockdown where things started to ramp up a bit and I actually like escalated my store and uh, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to be tax registered really. So with my old job, uh, one of our clients was an accountant, so I reached out to them and they said they'd they'd help me and sort me out. So last year went fairly smooth. They kind of like that they guided me through it. This year, I was like, you know what? I know what I need to do, so I'm fine. And I've kind of like, I did. I, I started as I meant to go on, and I, yeah. I did it as I went. And I got to like August time, and then the reason that it went tits up is because um, my my I've got like obviously my bank card for my personal account, and then I've got my eBay card or my business card, and um, I linked it to to PayPal so that when I buy my, oh, okay. when okay. I buy yeah. my postage yeah. labels it goes through on my business yeah. account. So, you know, when I pay, pay for my labels, it comes out my eBay card, it's all yeah. in one place. And for some reason, it's kind of glitched and I've tried to get PayPal to rectify it and they said they can't. They said the only way really around it is by making a new account, but I don't really want to do that. Yeah. So um, what I've got now is like my personal account and my business account and I've got to go through everything and just, oh, and it's taken me so long. And, and as a result, I gave up, like I kind of got to August and when I saw all these postage things, they came out individually. Before, I could buy 12 labels and it'd be one payment. Yeah. And on my tax thing, I just need to put like, you know, £12.50 at the post office. Of course. And now it's like £3, £3, £150, £150, £2. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a really big headache. So that is the bane of my life at the moment. So yes, I do claim tax. Um, it's quite simple enough to do as long as you... My only advice to anyone that is like, thinking about claiming the tax like if you're thinking about it that means you're close or you know yeah. you probably should so you know hmrc are clamping down on it now with then like new like the laws haven't changed but they've they've put in new rules where ebay have to re report their their selling so, so like an informer to me so yeah so if you <laughs> honestly apparently that they've, they've employed like get this they've employed 24 people for this specific role and that the, the main aim of these 24 people is to if someone makes 30 sales on etsy ebay etc um ebay and etsy and depop are now liable to say right yeah. we have to pass over this to hmrc and then these 24 people get to investigate it and if you make over a thousand pound in sales you have to investigate it and then yeah. you have to so so it is getting in bit, the matrix yeah so it's a bit a bit scary to be fair how how like closely yeah. tabs they're keeping on it but um I, I get it so um so yeah it is important to do and it is quite tricky like it's not the easy thing like i I debated going to an accountant for about six months, yeah. and it was like the reason scary, isn't it? It's, it's scary. Yeah, it's scary. But you think, oh, you're going to get told off. Yeah, but if if, if, if if money is an issue in terms of paying the accountant, or you're yeah. not making all that much money, but you're making just enough to mm. to meet the threshold, then try and reach out, like network, try and reach out to family, friends. Someone might know someone who's mm. an accountant, might be able to do it cheaper for you, or just yeah. just give you some advice. Dodgy day. And, and do it yourself. Yeah. Dodgy day. But no, <laughs> no, like the the thing with my accountants is what I have given fair play to yeah. is like that they're very thorough yeah. and that's what's caused me a lot of stress over the last month yeah. it's so thorough that I've got like so many like I have a thousand eBay sales last year wow. so I've got a list of a thousand sales and he wants me to go through each each item and say like when I bought it and how much yeah. I paid for it I need to set up some automation so it's you. it's very like tedious going through a thousand yeah. items so it's take, it taking me a long time but I've been photographing my receipts as I go that's the main yeah. thing photograph your receipts um, keep an eye on your bank statements and obviously at yeah. the end of the tax year print off your bank statements and the advice he gave to me which actually was quite helpful was like go through and just tick off each transaction and if you've got the receipt for that transaction tick it off mm -hmm. if you haven't make a separate list of like no receipts yeah. and then you'll be able to you know file it that way so um, 
you know, it, it, I know what I need to do, but it's just such a long process. Yeah. So it is, it is scary. It is a headache. But I, my advice as well would be do it as you go. Don't do what I did and leave it until the last minute because yeah. the last, what, three weeks? Like, my YouTube channel suffered because the last month I've, met, I've uploaded, like, two videos. Nervous I've, breakdowns. I've, 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 yeah, I've, you've seen me, like, like, I'm here every day. I'm here every day after work trying to, trying to do all my taxes yeah. and stuff. Um, it's a nightmare. Yeah. So, yeah. We don't want to see any more comments, do we, saying, are oh, you registered for tax? No, I had a few comments at the start of my channel. I think people assumed I was part-time. I think that's yeah. the thing, there's a stigma no. about part-time reselling is, oh, you're not a real reseller because yeah. you don't do it full-time. You, you don't dedicate your life yeah. to it. You're just trying to get extra money and you're a private seller and this and that. But I'm a business account, registered, tax registered, and everything. I do it properly. Um, Legit, it's just, baby. Yeah. It's unfortunate I don't make as much money as the big boys, but yeah. you got everyone starts somewhere. One day, it? one day. So the lady herself, EJ. Yeah, so that's my girlfriend. Yeah, she left a comment. Shout out EJ. <laughs> so she asks, what's the worst thing you've ever bought? And what do you do with the items that just won't sell? Well, we kind of discussed most of this. So with the, I'm quite patient. So to be honest, I should just get rid of them or take mm -hmm. them to the car. But I should have like a, like a three or six month rotation yeah. list of like, right, it hasn't sold by then, reduce it. Yeah. It hasn't sold by then, reduce it even more. If it still hasn't sold by then, just, just get rid of it. But I'm quite stubborn, so I'll be like, no, do you know what? I paid this. I I, went, I bought this with the intention it's going to make a profit. Yeah. Therefore, I will be stubborn and I will wait. Until <laughs> so, even if I'm waiting two years, I will yeah. wait. So, But no, I am I am sort of starting to get to the point now where space is a bit of an issue. So I am, like, I've got a car boot planned where I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to sell and try and like get rid of all the crappy stuff that's just been lingering. Yeah. Um, I think her opinion is probably that watch bundle that we just discussed. Yeah. I think she's probably that you know when I remember when I bought the watch bundle, she was like, "What are you doing?" We, yeah. we were just we were in the process of buying a house, and um, you know I won't say how much, but um, I put you know the deposit down for the house, and we kind of, but we you know we we it, you know <laughs> it was a percentage, but um, we didn't meet the like next threshold of the yeah. percentage, so it was kind of like I wanted to just put all my money down and take as much off the mortgage as possible. But um, in the end, we decided to like keep some spare, yeah. you know, house repairs and bills. You know, it's expensive as I know now. You know, yeah. We've had a few yeah. leaks, leaks and stuff, and some repairs and whatever. But um, we had some money aside, and at the same time as I just bought this house, which is kind of where the annoyance came in, was yeah. like we just, you know, had this big expensive move coming up, and I just so happened to like go to a car boot that my aunt was running, um, and uh, she she decided to, to run a little car boot, and she said, "Oh, do you want to come down?" Yeah. So I went down, and there was a bloke that she knew. And uh, she works in a supermarket, so he's a regular that goes okay. into the supermarket. Okay. So it's like a charity, like fundraising car boot yeah. in the supermarket. So we go in, and um, she comes over and she oh, I've just bought this this fancy little Reebok watch, and I was yeah. laughing like Reebok. Watch, you know? <laughs> and then she was like, "Oh, brand new in about five pounds." I was like, five pounds." Mm -hmm. I was like, "Even even though it's a Reebok watch, I was like five pounds for that." Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm laughing. You sure? He's got loads of watches. Go have a look. So I went over there, had a look, and uh, this really nice gold watch. Um, and I just you know just joined you for the yeah. job. And we were networking and going to all these meetings and stuff. And I thought, you know what, that, that gold watch will be nice. So yeah. I bought that £10. And when I opened the box and looked in it, um, it had a tag saying €249. Euros. Mm -hmm. So I went back and spoke to him. I was like, I was like, these are all legit, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. And he kind of like looked at me as if I was insulting him. Like, yeah, I'm sure he, he did. His, he was like Ronnie Pickering. He's like, do you know who I am? <laughs> like, do you know who I am? <laughs> and now, like, he essentially what I gather from him is that he uh, he'd had a watch shop for ages, yeah. and then um, he was obviously uh, I've mentioned this already earlier, but like, he had the watch shop and he, he sold the shop and he had all these these things. So um, so I went over and I, and I bought them, um, and then I said to him like, I tell you what, let me buy some of them now and then send me a message with however many you got left. And for him, he said that he's just clearing the last of his stock yeah. and it's just a case of like... It's not really yeah, worth it. Yeah, yeah, get in. <laughs> Probably, but no, he, he said he was getting rid of the rest of his stock, but he said for him, it's the time of like getting up, going to the car boots yeah. every weekend and selling them at the car boots. Of so he said, if I can just get up and rid of one go, yeah. I'll do you a deal. So he, he did me a good deal. And uh, as I said, I'll, I'll make a video on it going into a debt property. But, but at the time... That was a big purchase and a lot of money, and uh, we'd already spent a lot of money on the house, and uh, she was absolutely fuming. Um, and I remember a mum coming to visit. Apologise. I remember a mum coming to visit. Uh, no, I'm not going to apologise. Uh, <laughs> I, I, as I said, I stand, I stand by. It was a good purchase. I just haven't haven't uh, fulfilled my time and commitment yep. to that bundle yet. But um, but no, I remember a mum came to visit, and uh, I sort of went, "Oh, I'm just nipping out." And I, I told her I was buying it, but yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. I didn't get the best reception, and. Uh, I came back all smug, being like, oh, you know, oh. come and look at my watch. And they were just looking at it in disgust, yeah. like, can't believe you've just done that. Yep. 
So in the end, I rang you up and uh, <laughs> met you at the park. Yep. Yeah, you brought your son with you, and you yep. were like, "I want to see it." So uh, yeah. you saw me the first time, um, yeah. but that was just like a small selection. And when I told you about it and showed you it, you were like, "Okay, it might you know it yeah. might be the real deal." Because I was asking you your opinion on it, yeah. and then you uh, you you were like, "Right." Uh, so I told you like, I bought the whole lot now, yeah. and you were like, "I want to see these watches," and that's when yep. you liked that watch. So. Uh, so yeah, that that's probably the worst thing I've bought in terms of how long it's taken me. Like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not nowhere near profit. Yeah. I, I've I've sold enough that even the, like I've sold a very small fraction of what I've got, and I've still made a decent bit back. Like if I add up mm -hmm. everything that I've I've sold so far, I've got a, a really good like yeah. I'm, I'm probably like twenty five percent way there to making okay. money back. But I've nowhere near sold twenty five percent of the stock. Yeah. So it's a fail in terms of the money invested and the time invested so far. But um, there's still more to go. But um, other other than that, there's not. Uh, there's probably a few other things I've forgotten about, but that will definitely be be hers. That, um, yeah. But I, I mean, the amount of times I buy loads of crap. Um, yeah. What? But what answer would EJ like you to give? We. What? How uh, would? What would she like you to do? She. We we went to a car boot this year actually, and this was the one I was most angry about. It it wasn't a big fail. It cost me seven quid. But the, uh, she will laugh at this. But like. Um, I bought some Furbies off this guy and I made a video on it. Yeah. it was, I think it was my first ever like car boot video. And uh, I bought a load of Furbies and um, they're all vintage and it was really good price. So in, in, in the grand scheme of things, I can't complain yeah. because it was 40 quid for the Furbies and they're, okay. worth, they're worth like two, three hundred pounds. If I break them all down, there's about nine really yeah. collectible ones in there. And then he said to me, oh, I've got a bunch of My Little Ponies. So I was like, I don't, I don't want them, you know, I don't yeah, really yeah. like My Little Pony, I don't really care about My Little Pony, so I was like, I'm good. And he, no, he wanted 15 quid for the bag, and he said, tell you what, he said, if you buy in the Furbies, he's like, how about like seven quid? He said, do half, yeah. half the price, he said, seven pound, four pound. Oh, yeah, I remember Because I, yeah. I think I had some change in my hands, yeah. so he was like, he could see I had seven pounds, so he was like, tell you what, I'll do the 47 quid and you can have the bag, and I was like, go on then. Yeah. And as, I, as we were walking around the car, but we were looking it up on our phone, and she's like, oh, if you get like the 1980s or 90s ones, they're like, 15, 20, 30, some of them, there's one here that's like 140 pounds for this one pony. So I was like, all right, we had, yeah. a, had a look in the bag and I could see like they looked all right. And then I got home and they were all just like knock fake, off. cheap knockoffs, like from Tesco or something. Do you remember Sterling Safe back in the day? Yeah. Yeah, they were yeah, one of the Sterling Safe. Obviously. <laughs> I bought them in and I gave some to your daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she had uh, it. Um, I, I uh, won't say son, but he did, yeah. he did play with one of them. But now, um, and then we went through the bag and like they were just all fake and I was yeah. so like annoyed because it was just like, for me, it's just like, Got him. I was like, I don't want to just throw him in the bin, but it made me want to throw him in the bin. Yeah. Uh, and part of me is like, I've just spent seven pound on these, yeah. so I, I will try and make some money on these. But there was one or two real ones in there, but I don't think yeah. they're worth a lot. But like, I, I, it's one of them. It was one of the cases where you thought you'd hit the jackpot, yeah. and then you got home, and it's like, oh great. Yeah. And actually, oh, sorry, uh, this is a good story. I need to tell this one. Like so, and this involves EJ. So she'll she'll. I, uh, I don't know if she'll appreciate it, but she'll, she'll find it funny. So um, we'd just been to a wedding and we came back. It was about 11 o'clock. She was staying at mine. We'd, we'd probably been seeing each other about a year and she was staying at mine. And uh, on Facebook at half 11 at night, I saw this uh, PlayStation 1 bundle. I don't know if I've ever told you the story. And I saw a PlayStation 1 bundle and it was a games console with probably about 45 PS1 games. And it was a quick, it was one picture and it was a PS1, all the games surrounded. Yeah. Spyro, Crash, Resident Evil, all the big hitters were there. I was Jeez. like, oh my God. I was like, 30 quid he wanted. Money, 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 and I, I clicked, yeah. clicked the profile, and it was just an old man selling it. And I yeah. thought, oh, I feel bad, because yeah. 30 quid. But I messaged him at half 11. I was like, um, when can I collect this? And he was yeah. like, I'm free now. Uh -huh. and, I, and I said to EJ, I said, if we wait till the morning, yeah. I said, that is going to be gone. I said, we yeah. need to leave now. I'd had a drink. A horror story. I, I, okay, I'd, I'd okay. had a drink at the wedding, so I couldn't drive. Yeah. So I literally begged her. She didn't want to drive it. She'd never. Yeah. She's not from around here, so like she didn't yeah. want to drive into Birmingham at, at that time of night. And it was a good forty-minute drive. So it's I went and got the cash out, and we drove. I convinced her to drive all the way over there. We drove forty minutes to Birmingham, and I went met this guy at like about half midnight. Yeah. Picked up this box. He handed it me, and I looked in there. And immediately I knew I knew what, what I'd done. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the heart to say anything because I was like, I don't think he's done this on purpose. He, he's like a, he's like a 65-year-old bloke. I just thought maybe they're his childhood ones or his mm -hmm. grandkids or something. He's got them at the loft and he's just trying to sell them. So I was like, oh man, like I've, I've messed up here. And I walked back to the car like so disgusted with myself and so like, like it was such a rookie error. 
and uh, my girlfriend was there waiting. She's like, did you get them? Did you get them? And when she saw my face, she's like, what's wrong? And I was like, don't talk about it. Mm-mm. I was like, don't want to talk about it. I said, just, just drive home. I said, don't want to talk about it. And it was a really horrible, like, 30-minute, like, drive home of just pure silence. Once I told what happened, it was yeah. silence. And, like, the next hour, I was just angry about it. Nah, so so I, I looked in the box. You got a PS1, fine. Controllers, fine. Every single game yeah. was, like, a printed cover in a CD case. Not even, like, the PS1 cases in the UK are thick. These were thin CD cases with, like, a blurry... Like word art cover, like like really bad, like like the, like the ink had ran out on some of them. Yeah. And I opened them up, and the discs were just blank discs with like handwriting on them, Mm-mm. and it was like a chipped PS One, like fake games. And then after some reflection, I thought, you know what? Like, okay, they're not real. I'm mm. not going to get any money. I can't sell these. I can't mm-hmm. sell them on eBay. We're not going to sell them at the car boot. Maybe I'll just keep them for myself, and if they work, mm-hmm. I can play them. And yes, they're fake, but I can still play them. One of the CDs had a sticker on it. That's how bad it was. It had like a laminate sticker Ooh, like of, the, of the, what the game should have been on the disc. And I put them in the PS1 that none of them worked. So they, they didn't even work. So I literally, at that point, the second I put one in, it didn't work. I was like, oh, great, here we go. Put another one in, it didn't work. Because like, if you've got the games, the PS1 should be chipped. Of so course, of course. None of them worked. So I literally picked up the whole lot from straight in the bin in annoyance. And, oh, like, no. and, and I never thought about it again. I took, I took the PS1 to a car boot, sold it for 20 quid, cut my losses. Yeah. And I never thought about it again. Could be worse. But, we spent an an hour and forty. She was fuming. She was out, like, got a, she was she was supportive. She, we we laughed about it, but she was fuming that like she thought that she'd you know committed an hour and a half of her time to take me over there. I was gonna be absolutely buzzing yeah. afterwards, and I came back so depressed. And she was oh, like, "Well, no, that was a waste man. of time." And like, oh. and she was just mad that I got her out. We were literally that was the other thing. We were in bed. We were, we got in bed about half ten, and you know, on their phones, whatever. And I got her out of bed, made her yeah. get changed, and drive over to Birmingham. And they were all fake. He got you there. He got you there. So, last but not least, yep. Mr. Hughes, Connor Hughes himself. Mr. Hughes, yeah. Shout, right, Connor? shout out, yeah. Uh, Connor, yeah. Shout out, Connor. So, Connor says, hey, mate, what's your favourite collector's item in your collection? Uh, I'm going to do that thing again where I'm going to give Connor a very quick shout out before we answer the question. So, yep. Connor's a good friend of mine from school. We've been, been friends years. Um, and since I've made the channel, uh, he was actually the first like person I told about, the, other than you, yeah. first person I told about the channel. Um, I wasn't going to tell him because we, me and him are in like a, a group of friends and I didn't really want them finding out. Like They'd be supportive of it maybe, but at the same time, like, I was too embarrassed to like show people the channel and stuff. So I didn't want to tell anyone. And he, he turned up with a Christmas present, um, which I weren't expecting. It was really nice of him. And he, and uh, I think he gave me like an Arcarina from uh, Zelda. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, so he, t- he turned up with this uh, with with this um, Arcarina gift. So I invited him in, and uh, the house was a bit messy. We just moved in, but I invited him in, and he said, "Oh, can I see the game collection?" So he, he, he come in, and then I kind of just openly told him I was like, "Hey, oh, he, as he saw the camera, like, yeah. I had a camera set up with um, with a tripod, and he was like, what's going on here?'" Is it for that? So I was like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah I tried to embarrass that, but no, um, no he, he came in. Uh, so I just openly told him, and yeah. since then he subscribed to the channel straight away. He, I think, I was on thirty subscribers. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I vaguely remember. I ra- remember random numbers, and yeah. thirty-one is the old house I used to live in. So I remember when he subscribed. He was the thirty. He was the thirty-first yeah. subscriber. And um, yeah, he's been watching most of the videos. Every time That's I see, nice. every time I see him, he always says, "Oh, I like your new video." He always says, "Oh, nice. when's your next video out?" And he's donated like some books, which sold for like sixty pound. He's uh, given me some controllers and stuff. I'm sure, you're selling like... the profits. <laughs> no, he's, 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 he's in the video. I always yeah. offer him half. Uh, you know, every time he take gives it, me, every time he gives me some stuff, I always I always offer him half back. Yeah. But, um, he, he doesn't let me give him any money back. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, he, he's a big big uh, nice. sound guy. Nice. But in terms of the best like collectible item. Um, I've got, I've got quite a few things, but I I, um, I don't know if we, we touched on it earlier. Maybe we'll yeah. come back to it after this question. But um, but one of my favourite game series of all time was uh, was um, Zelda. Yeah. And that that uh, I'm sure there was a question somewhere about what sparked the the collection. Um, yeah. But we'll we'll come back to that afterwards. But but um, as a result, I'm a big Zelda fan, as as you know. And I think one one year you you bought me a Zelda figure. So, yeah, I remember that. So. Yeah. Whether it's that figure or not, I'll say that one because that's the one you bought me. But um, yeah. I've got like one of one of my favourite games was uh, Twilight Princess on the Wii, and I've got like a Twilight Princess Zelda figure like on the base, like really high detailed figure. Uh, that's pretty cool. You got me the Skyward Sword one, which is badass as well. I've got the sword yeah. and shield and everything. So, so those figures are quite cool. Like um, 
a game you can look at it and it's just, yeah. just a game but the figures actually look uh, like, a, like a talking point um there's a few like alien items i've got but i've got so many that I, sure. you know off the top of my head i can't really remember there was one alien item i remember getting it is like a like a replica claw machine and it yeah. actually like works like you can literally use the crane and there's, oh, that's like, cool and there's aliens inside it but it was like a proper collectible so it's like 85 pound on the mm -hmm. disney store it might have been, I think it was 120 and I bought it on offer for 85 yeah. and it was 120 quid but it actually worked and the, the detail on the figures are really good so like when the claw went down it actually picked that's up cool. the aliens um, so cool. that, that's that's one of my favorite alien items but um yeah the collector line probably like yeah. one of those older figures and I remember, cool. I remember you got me that for Christmas yeah. it, from uh, Forbidden Planet wasn't it it was yeah I think I we were out shopping bar, together right? and I saw it and I was gonna buy it and I yeah. didn't and then you went back and went bought back it for me, yeah, for yeah. me yeah. <laughs> like, G that you are my man <laughs> I just realised we've got this far so far. We haven't even mentioned your Sat Boy collection. Oh yeah, the Sat Boy collection. Yeah. So similar to the. You've got to put a photo. Yeah. You've got to put a photo up on this video. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and put it on the screen. Yeah. So similar to the aliens, I think I don't know what came first. I think Sat Boy came first, although it was around yeah. the same time. Yeah, it probably. But was. when when I got to that period of my life when I was about thirteen, fourteen, I was just like really into gaming and I just wanted to collect everything yeah. uh, but it weren't just collecting games it was collecting figures toys and then obviously as you get older I got rid of those or, or just shoved them in a box and yeah. still, still got them somewhere but then I moved on to like collecting games um, but the Sackboy collection so um, Little Big Planet I played it so I mentioned the Burnout games um, went to my mate's house um, and he had a PS3 and yeah. this was when the PS3 had just dropped in the UK and it was so hard to get yeah. And I think his mum worked at Tesco and they had like okay. a very limited stock in and she managed to like put one aside for him. Yeah. So she bought it for the family for Christmas. So he invited me over and, and I didn't know he had one. He invited me over and he was like, oh, yeah, I've got a PS3. And I was like, you're joking. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah, I've got a PS3. And he had Burnout Paradise. So that was like, wow, yeah. that was the yeah. first big, like, like amazing game I played. But then he also, um, I think, I think I, it was his birthday and his yeah. birthday was March. Mine was April. Okay. And we were discussing on the way to school. We used to walk to school together. And we're discussing about this little big planet game and he said like oh yeah um it comes out in like a few days and i, I don't know why but i vaguely remember that um it came out in 2008 and uh amazon were having a sale yeah and it was a, quite a new game and it got you know it was massively acclaimed and it was in all the magazines they feel like this new game little big planet's come out yeah. it's groundbreaking and uh it was on sale for like nine quid on amazon mm -hmm. or like 10 quid which was unheard of for a console that new and, a, and a game that yeah. big. So I bought, uh, so I think what happened is my, my mum bought two copies, but I, I got her to buy one for him for a present. So she bought two knowing she was going to buy me a PS3 for yeah. my birthday. Um, so I didn't realise. So it came through the post and they put both in the same box. So I was like, there's two. Yeah. And she was like, oh, they must have sent, they've sent two by mistake. They were like, and she said to me, like, I'm going to have to send it back because like, yeah. that's stealing. So I was like, oh, okay. So she's like, leave it with me and I'll sort it. So she's like, you know, give that to him for his birthday. So it came a few days for his birthday, gave it to him, went round his house, we put the disc in, and the game was unbelievable. Like, you know, for, it's, yeah. it's, it's a kid's game at heart, but yeah, as yeah. an adult, you can still enjoy it. Yeah, you can still play it, yeah. Um, but we spent ages playing that. So for, so his birthday was a month before mine, so that, that month I was literally round his house like every day. I kept walking home and being like, oh, can I come in and play a little bit of Yeah. And then eventually, like for my birthday, my mum said to me, like, oh, you know, I can't afford that PlayStation or I can't find one. So I'll say that. And on my birthday, <laughs> go downstairs, yeah. there's a big, massive box on the table. And obviously, I'm like, it's yeah. going to be the PS3. A big yeah. ass, chunky, like 80 gigabyte, like low memory, big Remember fat that. thing. Yeah. And then, literally, like a few weeks later, they brought out like a nice, slim one. But anyway, yeah. so we got this oh. big, fat thing and uh, Little Big Planet. And that was the only game I had on it for like about two or three weeks. Yeah. Um, and then I won that voucher in school. Do you remember that? When I remember I did that, that uh, competition. I won a fifty pound voucher. Another competition. When, when I bought, bought myself uh, three games: Mirror's Edge, uh, Metal Gear Solid, and Call of Duty World at War. What Metal Gear Solid was that? Uh, Metal Fancy. Gear Solid Four. I started okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I found it quite difficult. I, yeah. I think the cutscenes got a bit boring. I never really properly played yeah. it. It was the first time where I started buying games to the point where I had a backlog, and okay, it just yeah. never got around to being played. Yeah. But I enjoyed Mirror's Edge, and I and World at War was my first Call of Duty game. Yeah. But I got Little Planet. And I used to just sit and play that all the time, and and then and then as a result, they started bringing out merch for it, um, and key rings, mugs, go. plushies, books, bags, you know, I got it all. I I got a paper round at that time, and I was getting ten pound a week. And uh, at the time, the paper rounds were really stingy; like you'd get yeah. like five or six pound max, and you could deliver like three hundred newspapers, and they'd give you six pound. But I had a little hack where like my paper round was like uh, across the other side of the town yeah 
and it was you on my it, dump it everywhere. Well, no, 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 no. It was on my. <laughs> I wish I should have thought that. I was I was too honest. Um, but it was on my aunt's road. Yeah. My aunt told me about it um, and said, "Oh, there's a paper round company on our road." But because I had to travel like over so many miles to get there, they gave us a petrol allowance. Okay. And that petrol allowance was five pounds, which isn't a lot, but at the yeah. time that was double what most people get. So yeah. most people were getting four or five pound a paper round. I was getting ten pound, and I was delivering half the amount of newspapers as they were. I remember some people in school were delivering like three or four hundred newspapers, yeah. and I had one hundred and twenty. So it was a nice little cushy job, and uh, I used to go in, and then um, I used to give my mum the money and uh, say, "Oh, can you buy this?" Or, or I'd use my mum's card, and I'd have a bank yeah. card. But obviously, uh, you need to be like eighteen or whatever to buy certain yeah. stuff. So like, I'd, I'd get get her to buy it, transfer the money, and um, we'd we'd be ordering like every few weeks because Little Big Planet was a big game. Yeah, it was, like, yeah, it was huge mugs cups everything they all come out and i used to buy like they had like little key rings then they had figures and then they had even bigger figures and then them figures would have plushies and then plushies would have small medium large and i literally bought every single one like i had a shelf at one point to dedicate to it and this kind of came before the aliens and then yeah. i kind of like they stopped making merch for it yeah. um it wasn't as big anymore i think they, they did yeah <laughs> they stopped making merch for it um at least at the rate they were pumping it out at yeah and then uh, the, the, that kind of like turned into the alien collection after that. I kind of put all that away and then uh, got the aliens instead. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, the little big planet, I still got it. Um, I think the reason I haven't sold it yet is one, I still like have sure. some nostalgia for the game, but two, it, it's like, again, it's that, it's that um, I don't want to lose on it. Yeah. Like, so I'm, I'm patient. So for me, a lot of the stuff I bought when I bought it, it was for the collection. And I remember my mum and some family saying, like, it's cool, you've got it, but you do realise you're not going to make money yeah. on that. And I was like, oh, well, these are going to go up, these are collectibles, these, these are going up in price. And to be fair, they've not gone down in price, but they've not gone up. They're yeah. just like, you can buy it on eBay for the same price as you did back then. But there'll be a time where, where they become, like, collectible. People will. Want them. Like, they'll become nostalgic. Like, people are starting to get to that age now where Little yeah. Bit Planet was a childhood game. Yeah. And now they're adults. Yeah. They're going to have adult money. They're going to be like, I want that figure. Of course. And yeah. I've seen some of them on eBay go for a lot of money anyway. So, I, again, I don't think it was a, a bad investment. But, no, I, at the time, I bought them because I enjoyed the game. And uh, I remember your son loves that boy, doesn't Yeah, he, he? does. Yeah, he does. So, uh, I, I just hope he doesn't see that collection because he'll want it. But, I don't um, think he's seen it before, has he? No, he'll, no, he'll, he'll have to see it. But, uh, but, yeah, I'll put a picture on the screen. Uh, but, yeah, there's a pretty... It's not an insane collection, but I think at the time I literally had everything you could buy in the UK. Like I was scouring every website to buy every single nook and yeah. cranny. And that's that's how the Little Big Planet came uh, out. So I've just realised, sorry Tom, we've left out one of my questions for you. So just going back slightly, I just want to ask you Tom, what sparked your passion for collecting games? I remember coming around your house when we were younger and playing the Wii and collecting Nintendo magazines. But I don't remember you having a massive collection until later on. So what's, what sparked it? Yeah, so we, we, we've discussed the Nintendo Max and uh, you, you obviously, we used to come over and then yeah. um, we played Mario Kart. I remember we yeah, went, I remember we went, coming down like in the a, morning. We went, we went to, uh, was it like Tesco or something yeah, or was, Morrison's? Yeah, we got was. there really early, bought the game, you slept over. Yeah. And I think it actually, it came out the Friday. I yeah. bought it after school. You came over mine, we had a sleepover. And we absolutely hated it, didn't we? Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Ironically, Mar Mar Mario Kart Wii was one of our favourite games, yeah. right? But we, we put it in, and I don't know what we were expecting. Maybe yeah. it was the graphics, and we thought, like... I think it was the Wii remote. Yeah. Not yeah. used to not So used we, to we, we didn't try out the nunchuck controls. Yeah. We tried the Wii remote. And we thought, wow, a racing game where yeah. you actually just tilt your hands like this is going to be groundbreaking, yeah. like amazing. And um, we put it in, and we absolutely hated it. We were awful at it. We were yeah. doing this and going into the barriers and everything. And then we, we slept on it. We, we played yeah. it again the next morning. And I think we tried different controllers, didn't we? We tried the yeah, GameCube controller. Yeah. And it was so much better. Once you actually knew how to like race properly, it was so good. Um, yeah, so like that was, that was a good time, Mario Kart. Um, but yeah, I think for me, uh, it was a bit of a random one. Um, but what kind of sparked it was I, I was in a car accident. And um, it was a bit of a silly one. I was in a car park of a supermarket. And some woman like, pulled into a space. Yeah. And I drove past, and as I drove past, she like slammed it in reverse and just, but it not just tapped me, like she come back with, with venom. Like she'd pulled in and gone, oh, I've parked at an angle here, and just gone, yeah. like, rammed it straight into me. So I've got a massive dent on both my doors. Uh, call the insurance up. She eventually takes liability for it. Yeah. And they said, oh, yeah, I only had like a Nissan Micro at the time. And um, good old Nissan Micro. Oh, we, we, we've got some stories. Beautiful for that, it was. Man. 
And uh, no, but it really wasn't. It was probably like the most, the most embarrassing. I remember the day you got it and you come to my mum's yeah. house and you're trying to reverse it in that little car park. Please like don't. 30 times and people uh, that was outside. That was a hard car park, man. Nah, it was easy. Right. To be fair, I passed my test in January. And yeah. for whatever reason, I was like, I wanted to get the right car. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah found yeah, the right yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to get a nice car, right? Yeah. And uh, I waited and was patient. And yeah. uh, it took about six months to find a car. But eventually, I got to the point where, where I, instead of waiting to find the right car, I thought the insurance is so expensive. Yeah. I was, what, 18? Yeah, um, the yeah. insurance was expensive. The cars were expensive. So... I was like, do you know what? Let's just get a car. My aunt texted me and said, oh, there's a nice little Nissan Micra at the end of the road. Yeah. Like, you know, two grand, got like barely any mileage on it. Nice little car. And do you know what? I was like reluctant to go see it. I was like, I don't want this car. Yeah. And I got in it and I drove it. And you know when like the car chooses you? Like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. like in Transformers. Like, yeah. as, mu- as much as I didn't like the look of the car, yeah. I got in it and it felt so easy to drive. And yeah. it, it was like I, I, like I hadn't driven in six months. And I test drove another car. And it was like a Volkswagen like Polo or something. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it was from like the 90s, which at the time wasn't that bad yeah. compared to now. Um, but like the gear stick was like loose. It was like horrible. The, the bite and the clutch was, was awful. And as I was driving it, I almost stalled it. And then this car just got in it. It just drove down the road yeah. perfectly. Reversed it nicely, ironically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Do you know what? I was like, it's a car. I've yeah. got the money. I want the car now. I'm desperate to drive. Let's get it. So I bought the car. And it was a pretty, pretty embarrassing car. But yeah, it got, got a massive dent in it. So completely written off. And the insurance were like, right, um, we're going to pay out. And they paid out the exact... It worked out once I'd done the calculations after I'd sort of gone through these gaming, collecting. Um, they paid out the pretty much to a T, like the exact amount. It was like pence in it. Um, but they paid out like 1,200 and something pounds. And yeah. that's how much I spent on this collection, which kind of sparked the uh, yeah. collecting. And um, for me... So you telling me your game collection... Came because Started. some dithering because old Because you got hit on the head. <laughs> we got whiplash. Basically, yeah, basically. I got concussed, yeah. I, 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 got, the scent, I got the sense knocked out. Didn't it? Oh, no. So, uh, yeah, so, so then... Um, oh, oh. So, so, yeah, so, so I, I, I got all this money and I'm thinking, yeah. what to do? I, I'm living at home, I'm with my mum, like I'm paying yeah. cheap rent. I've, I've got, like my wages are already covering the rent and stuff, yeah. so it's like, it's just spare money, it's fun yeah. money. I haven't really thought properly about like I need a house, I need this. It's just like fun money. So I'm like, what do I do with it? And I went up to Birmingham, um, and there's a you know Oasis in Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. It's like a for those that don't know, it's like a big indoor. Sh- it's like a shop with loads of like sections in it, and there's individual shops, and they're all like fairly small, medium sized businesses. And there'll be like a second hand clothing store. There'll be like an ear piercing mm-hmm. shop. There'll be a, a tattoo in place. Yep. Be, there's like a cool like metal shop down below where yep. they've got like CDs and block and metal shirts and stuff. And then there's this little gaming shop that sells like car, like trading cards, Pokemon cards, everything. They've got like figures and collectibles. And I went in, and my favourite game when I was a kid, mm. when I was growing up, uh, we had a Nintendo 64. Me and my sister used to play it. And um, Zelda: Ocarina of Time was my favourite game. Yep. We could never do it. One quick memory I'll say on it was that we lent it to my uncle because he was really good at the game. Yep. He, he was like mind blown. Like for him, yep. like he probably grew up in an era where like Pong was like, Pong. it was like the only yeah. game to play yeah. and Pac-Man and that. So like seeing 3D graphics, he was probably like, whoa. So, yeah. <laughs> so we, we, were st- we showed him when he came around and he was like, this is really good. And yep. we were like, oh, we're stuck. We didn't know what to do. So what he did was like, I think it was kind of before the internet. I think he okay. bought a guide or something. And he, um, he basically like, got really far into the game for us and he gave it us back with the save data and we you go from a kid to an adult and you have to like do so much as a kid before you turn into an adult just um, so people know just for the younger people watching this so you used to be able to save onto the game didn't you yes yeah, so you'd save onto the cartridge yeah. or onto the system yeah so so um you'd have only have like three save files but it's kind of like now but it's all yeah. more like cloud-based nowadays but this was so if you delete your save data it's not nowadays it's not a problem it's backed up this time it wasn't backed up, so um, he gave us a cartridge back, and you start as a kid, and you 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 know grow into an adult, and you kind of go back in time and forward in time, um, and when you go forward to an adult, but we could never get to that adult stage; it was too hard for us. There's so many like dungeons and bosses you gotta go through. And we were only like I was about four or five, my sister was probably about six, and we just couldn't do it. So he he gave it us back. We've got all this like we've got bombs, we've got arrows, we've got like the new suit. Nice. We've got metal shoes, which we were like, you can get metal shoes. Yeah. Right? And we're stomping around Hyrule <laughs> Field and everything. So we're really cool. And then I went on one day and accidentally deleted the save data. Mm. And that when I remember me and my sister, we had like heated arguments. Like 
she was yeah. screaming at me like I think I think I clicked like new game and accidentally overwrote the save data. Have you admitted that to Sophie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, she knew what I'd done straight away. And, Did she uh, watch your video? Uh, no, actually, I sent I sent her the channel when I made it, and I thought she'd watch it, and she didn't. So we, we never know. But um, I, might, I might send her this one. But yeah. um, but now, uh, so we, we played this game. It was so good, and um, and we loved it. And even though I deleted the save data and we had an argument over it. Like that yeah. was one of my favourite games. So I hadn't actually played that game properly since since my childhood. So um, I was, at the time it was coming out on the 3DS and it was one of the okay. launch titles for the 3DS. Yeah. And I really wanted a 3DS. Um, but I, it took me a while to get one. So even yeah. though I really wanted the game, I didn't really have the money that I have now to go yeah, spend two hundred quid on one. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Children, yeah. Um, so I got this payout and I went to the shop and in there is the Ocarina of Time in the box with the manual. And for those that collect games know that like Anything nowadays is all in the plastic box, you know, like those ones in front there, they're all in plastic yeah. boxes. But the N64 actually, if I just, if I grab this one, yeah. so the N64 come in like a cartridge like this, and uh, that's another great game by the way, Pokemon Snap. Um, and uh, they, they come like that, but then they also come in like a cardboard sleeve or a tray yeah. with a manual. Sometimes you get some paperwork and whatever okay. else in there, and then it comes in a cardboard like actual square box. Yeah. And in the 90s, no one knew these were going to be collectible. Of so, course. of course, kids have opened them, ripped them apart, threw them in the bin. They just keep, you know, space saving. They'll just keep yeah, the cartridge. So to find it in the box with the manual, I was like mind blown. I yeah. was like, whoa, like, I hadn't really properly got into game collecting yet. So, I, so yeah, they might be readily available, but I didn't know that at the time. Of course. So for me, this was like a walk back in time. I was like, wow. Like, yeah, meant and to be. It, it was 25 quid. And I was like, is that it? And I've mm. just got £1,200 in my bank. I'm like, yeah, yeah. let's go. So, <laughs> so I bought this, bought a bunch of other stuff. And I got this game. And, and like the, the like buzz I got from holding that game again was like phenomenal. So like, yeah. I was like, right, I need an N64. So I bought an N64. Oh, you bought this without having an N64? Uh, I think I think I went and found an N64 not long after. Like I found a bundle on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, okay, I'm with you. I'm so, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why right. I went and bought this N64 after that, and I, and I did I did play it again. I never like fully completed it. I I got I, 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 I got it later down the line on the 3DS. Yeah. And I'm so close to finishing the game. It's ridiculous. Like I'm I'm right before the last boss. But part of me is like I am kind of stuck. But part I could just look it up. But I'm, I'm trying to do it without like cheating. Yeah. Um, but part of me, I think, is holding on to not completing it because it's like, once yeah. you complete it, that's that, that childhood over. Yeah. So it's like, I, I go back to it every now and again and play it. Um, but no, I love that game. And then once I found that, that buzz I got, I was like, right, yeah. I'm, I'm going to look at other Zelda games. Yeah. Like, um, and I remember playing the Wii one as well. So, um, and the Wii, the Wii version I played after playing it as a kid, but also before I bought this copy. Okay. So I, I knew I was into Zelda games. So I was like, right, do you know what? I'm yeah. going to collect every Zelda game. So I looked it up. And there was a lot more games than I thought because they've been coming out since like the 80s. Um, and there's probably about 20 games, 25, 30 games. They're on there like a lot more now. But at the time, I was around 2017, yeah. 18. There was probably about 25 games out. And I went through and I used this money and I bought all of the games. It was on eBay every day. But I always, my rule was try and get as best condition as I can. So if there was a tatty one, I'd ignore it. Yeah. And I was patient and I, I got some good stuff. And after about four months... I managed to get this full set of Zelda games and it, and I had, it did all the calculations and it came to like 1,200 and something. And I was like, that's mad, but it's literally the exact amount that my, uh, happened with the car crash uh, that I got paid out for. So um, it just kind of like felt like, kind of like meant to be. So then I got this Zelda collection and then I've got a couple of PS3 games that I've like, I had more, but I traded them in when the PS4 came out. And then I've got my PS4 games that I'm playing. Um, but I hadn't really like collected games at this point. And once I got the buzz for that full set, I was like, right, what can my next, yeah. like not full set be, but what can my next collection be? So I started like buying and selling like games and stuff. Um, and then in lockdown, um, I was, that's when I st really started to do the buying and selling more. And people were clearing out everything in lockdown. So there yeah, were so were. many game bundles and yeah. the PS5 was just coming out really hard to get, but it was just coming out. So the PS3 was now two generations old. Yeah. So everyone was just getting rid of it on Facebook. I've never really been an Xbox fan and I find it quite tedious like testing the Xboxes. The PlayStations, I know at the back of my hand, so it's really quick to test. So I was always looking for PS3 bundles. I found loads. And every time I bought one, because they were so old, like chances are people had a lot of games. So I was getting like 40, 50 games per bundle, uh, maybe more sometimes. And um, in my room when I was like, obviously storing them to sell, I had stacks and stacks of like, and I kept getting the same game over and over. Yeah. And occasionally I'd find like the odd game I didn't have. 
So I would like, uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to keep one of every game that I, that I don't have. So I put on all the easy ones and then occasionally I'd be getting bundles. And at first it was frustrating because obviously I bought them with a bit of like reselling yeah. like, in mind. And um, there'd be some really good ones in there and I'd be like, oh, I've got to add that to the shelf. And then once I got yeah. to about 300 games, I thought, you know what, why not just go for a full set? Yeah. And that's kind of where it got a bit out of hand. Uh, no. so, um, so I'm at about a thousand and th this includes variants, but I think I'm at about a thousand and eighty nine PS3 games when I counted the other day. So there's probably about nine hundred, nine hundred and twenty, thirty unique titles in there, and then the rest are like variants. Jeez. So I think I think there's like one thousand one hundred or something. Oh, in Europe. Oh, in the UK. Yeah. There's a f there's some European exclusive ones. I won't bore everyone, yeah. but like there's some European exclusive ones where it's like Buzz, yeah. like the music quiz game. And it's the same game, but in like 18 different languages. And people go ahead and like get all of them. Yeah. I, I can't even find one on eBay, let alone yeah. all 18. So yeah. whoever wants to do that, good luck to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm just trying to get all the UK ones. So yeah. I'm, 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 I'm getting there. But it, 2021 was probably the peak. 21 and 22, I was in CEX. And because I'd started the collection, um, it was growing rapidly because yeah. every time I went into CEX, my rule was if I can afford it, it's good condition, it's got the manual, yeah. I'll buy it. Yeah. And um, I was taking stacks and stacks to the counter each time because obviously I, there's a lot of games on the shelf. But then kind of as I've, it's getting harder now because as the collection's grown, yeah. the CEX shelves are getting smaller yeah, because obviously are, the yeah. people yeah. want the newer games. So it's it's getting a lot harder to find those games I need now. But So I've been going to like yeah. game conventions. Not even that, I'm guessing it's getting difficult to find up your games on the whole street, isn't it? Yeah, considering game no longer do second hand games, and exactly, well, yeah. yeah, so yeah, so it, it, it is difficult. It, like times have changed a bit, but um, but yeah, that's what sparked the collection. Yeah. So the, so so the, that Zelda game was like my favorite game. Finding that Zelda game again in the wild, physically yeah. with the cardboard box, was like, that's like it was like a nostalgia hit. Yeah. It was like it was Christmas again in like, like yeah. nineteen ninety eight or something. So I was like, wow. So I, you know, that started it. Then when I got that full, that I think getting the full set of Zelda games yeah. was what started the full set of PS3 or full set of Vita. Of course, so Vita's yeah. another thing I collect for as well. I won't really go into that, but you know, the little handheld device which nobody bought, um, <laughs> and as a result of nobody buying it, it they've all gone really expensive and that they're, they're hard to find. Yeah. So I think I only need fifteen more to complete that wow. set. Out of what, sorry. 229 UK ones, and then there's 101 limited run games, which I've got all, all 101. Oh, you've got all of the limited run yeah, games? Yes, so that's another purchase I made, which which wasn't wasn't for reselling in mind, that was for myself, but another one that my girlfriend probably will probably hate. But I I spent a similar amount of, as I did on the watches, but on a full set of these Vita games. Yeah. And they're all limited edition, so they're all about 30 to 40 pounds each at retail. So 100 games times that sort of money, yeah. you, know, you can do the math, it's, it's expensive. And um, some guy was selling the whole set, sealed, untouched. And I was like, I have to get this. And, and it, Local? And it, yeah. Um, no, it was from Ireland, so it was a bit risky. Okay, I had yeah. to PayPal him. And I was yeah. wait, pa patiently waiting for the package to turn up. And I think you, whenever you buy something online yeah. and you, you don't not trust the seller, but you yeah. have that, that bit of... If, bit of if they make an excuse once, you can, you can forgive yeah. it. But that's kind of the red flag start. Then. Yeah, so if someone says, oh... I can't post it today because I'm yeah. I'm late at work or yeah. something's come up. You kind of get that bit, and then if yeah. it happens a second time, you're like, okay, red flags. They're going to scam me. So, yeah. so I, was, I think he said to me, oh, I need to get like, you know, it's a big box. I'm going to need to get more bubble wrap and more like mm -hmm. poly mailing, like the little packing pieces yeah. thing. And I, um, I was a bit skeptical about it, and then I thought, you know what? Like I've paid him properly, yeah. so he. The worst thing you can do is not send it and I'll get my refund back. But I wanted the game, so yeah. I was patiently waiting. And eventually, like, it turned up. But he did he did make one or two, like, excuses or, you know, he's busy. So I was kind of like, oh, dear, is he going to send it? But um, that came through. And the idea with that was I was going to sell my duplicates and I didn't. So I've got a lot of them twice. Nice. Um, but those nice. those for me are, like, investments. That's yeah, of like, course. The actual games are open. I can play. You can buy and sell them regular. These ones are, like, limited edition in the packets. Very few quantities made. That's why they're so expensive, and I've kind of like they're my little like nest egg, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I got into collecting the games. Really, like, it just kind of happened. Probably when I was about eighteen, nineteen. Very nice. Very so, nice. And that's that's pretty much. I think all the questions we've probably rambled on far too long, but um, I don't know whether we'll do this in one or two parts. I need to see when I've made the video how long yeah. it is. So if you're watching this still, thank you for for getting this far into the video. Thank you. But very I think much. we'll 
we'll wrap it up there but if you if you enjoyed this video it's a bit different to the usual ebay reselling videos or the game collecting videos i make normally but if you do enjoy these videos um this podcast style um this is our podcast room in our office so uh, yes, indeed. we were wallpapering this last week weren't we you were wallpapering this yeah, i was just so telling you what to do bunch of cowboys never wallpapered, <laughs> never wallpapered in our life yeah so yeah, this is real wood. I don't know what you're on about. Yeah, paneling. Yeah, yeah. Expensive, expensive wood. Stuff. This is. Oh, so yeah, so it'd be, yeah, if, if you enjoyed this star video and you want us to do it, some more podcasts or yeah. anything else, leave a comment below. Let us know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you again for 700 subscribers, which is the reason I put the Q and A out. So thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.